college each week. You're like, yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> it's so good evening, and weekend. welcome to the Georgetown <laughs> School Committee meeting of Thursday, January 8th, 2015. If we could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I just want to start off the meeting saying Happy New Year to Happy everybody. Year. 2015, we'll yes. buy quick. Um, <laughs> The chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes regular session minutes of December 18th, 2014, and acceptance of warrants 25V15, 27V15, 26P15, and 28P15. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. We can um, talk to our student rep, Vanessa. Hi. Hi, Vanessa. Hi there. So uh, this week, actually, our JV ski team, they actually won their first oh, race okay. that they had. So that was pretty awesome. Um, Mr. Larson is one of the heads on that. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about today. Um, oh, also, there tonight, there is a performance by the advanced acting class that there is. And it's called Check, Please. It's actually pretty funny. It's about like these blind dates that go horribly wrong. <laughs> um, a lot of my friends were in it. And I saw them do like practice. So it was pretty cool to watch. And also, the musical tickets for this year's curtains go on sale next Wednesday online. So for anyone that's interested in that, next I'm, I'm in that show. So and you're online. <laughs> Is that new to be online? Yeah, this that's year is the idea. first time we're doing it online. It's going to make everything a lot more organized. Before it was like, oh, we oversold these tickets. Yeah. But now so I'll you can't like, do that at all? You can't uh, buy yeah, them I in school? Uh, you might be able to buy much. a few of them like the week before the show or so. OK. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, a good idea. Yeah, and we also, the music department's selling Celtics tickets that are a little more expensive than normal, but it's like a lot of the money goes towards our music department. So that's also an aw awesome sale that we're doing. And we have midterms coming up in the next few weeks, so we're all getting a little stressed out about that, <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. Um, and also, uh, like you guys know, that DECA, DECA districts were today, so all the kids did well. At yeah, the I'll, I'll talk a little yeah. about them too. Yeah. That's great. Were you um, excited to go back to school after that kind of long vacation or hesitant? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I, was sure. like, I was ready to get up out of bed for once. <laughs> <laughs> excited. Maybe. Schedules aren't a bad thing sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah, it was a good vacation, but it was yeah, I decided long. I liked Thursday as having Christmas because New Year's, you did have a little bit of extra time. Extra time. It's hard when it's New Year's Day and then you're back yeah, then the you're next back. day. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, that's good. It sounds like everybody's busy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear about the ski team. That's good. Yeah, they're doing great. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here from the public that would like to talk about anything on the agenda? All right. We can uh, move right along to um, Mr. John Pingree from the GAA is here. Yeah, Mr. Pingree. Nice to see you. How are you? Good, how are you? Welcome. And this time he's here because we have a wonderful project that's at the end. Yeah, we're done. I don't have to <laughs> tell you any bad news or deliver you anything, any problems or it's, it's I would say 99% completed. We have a few odds and ends to clean up, but uh, it's, it's been a long road, 10 years of planning and, you know, six <coughs> years of development. It's finally come to an end and a lot of people deserve credit, including Mrs. Jacobs well, we over there has been tremendous well. in yep. her tireless efforts and Mark Perry and Peter Durkee in the production process has been unbelievable with Mike Anderson and our light department has been tremendous mm -hmm. with helping That's us out with wiring and all kinds of stuff. It's amazing the townspeople, uh, what a good job on how they'll step up when, when, when you ask them, you know, right. when it's a good project and they want to help, um, you know, it's unbelievable we'll help. Especially, you know, light department and, and highway have mm -hmm. been they, uh, Yeah, they, really it's really not, really that's not necessarily the case everywhere. You yeah. know, yeah. The, I mean, most it, of the time, those things yeah, would be charged off. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Charged off. We didn't. We didn't. You know, we got lots of work done mm -hmm. by professional people mm -hmm. like that, and they didn't charge us for it. I mean, that's the type of thing that you know made us get in with within the budget. We wouldn't be able to get in within the budget without asking for more money. Without you know, Peter Durkee and, you know, Scott Edwards and, and guys like that really stepping up and helping us out. 
So, oh, that's great. That's so, nice. yeah. so how do you feel about the project? I see you out there all the time walking the per <laughs> perimeter. and I keep a close eye on things. <laughs> oh, that's <great>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. But how do you feel I, about I'm, the I'm overall? I'm ecstatic. I am. I think it looks unbelievable. Good. Walked it. Um, you know, they did a fantastic job out there. Yeah. The kids are so pleased with it. Yeah. So I, I, I'm it's really excited that it's done. I, I can't wait to see the first events take, taking place and mm -hmm. it's time mm -hmm. to see the townspeople go out there, you know. It was up to me. I like to build a little skating rink out there. And, you know, <laughs> we're not using it now, but that's just me, you know. So get the boards going. I'll be standing out there at night yeah. flooding the thing. He would. And he would. He did that. He used to do that in his yard, right? I know. I know. I so hear it's, they're uh, chomping at the bit over at the yeah. high school to get onto the yeah. field. Um, I'm anyway. sure they are. Well, I, I spoke to the uh, the engineer yesterday. All the warranties are in yeah. effect, yeah. so you can yeah. open oh, that field yeah. up and everything's well, The good only thing to go Joan wants to make sure of, she just wants to make sure that the town has insured it. Uh -huh. You know, so all the warranties okay, are yeah. done, but all we the need stuff to make sure the, the town is insured because we don't want anybody to get hurt we, and then there not be a... Yeah, I don't know about the town issues, but as far as the warranties and stuff that yeah, are supposed to be in to place, know. all that is in place. So Who has the keys? You know, we're the good keys. to go. We have the keys. <laughs> the Actually, I think <laughs> Mark Perry has a key. <laughs> and, to the uh, gate. To the gate. Yeah. To the gate. But the kids are getting on other ways than the gate. That was a, it was a discussion at the safety <laughs> committee, which yeah, I'll, I'll report yeah, on yeah, at yeah, that yeah. moment. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see the field opened up for yeah. people to use it when it's not, you know, it always has been opened up. So if some people are out there using it, you want to see the kids using the fields. Mm -hmm. There's so yeah. few good facilities for them to use and things to do. You know, it's one of my other ideas. I think, you know, when you move out of Pearly, you should make a youth center in there with the senior center. You know, maybe... What the oh, heck? boy. Oh, there's <laughs> the kids need a place to go, something they to do. You know, they yeah, really do. do. You know, that's why I'd like to see, you know, Friday night football and mm -hmm. Friday night lacrosse or soccer. It's going to be a good thing to get kids, you know, something to do, a place to oh, go. Oh, boy. Place to you want to see me tarred and feathered? I, I'm, I, I know. Let's just put a box <laughs> one somewhere. That is quite an idea. <laughs> but, John, you it's and I do amazing things somewhere. together, so maybe there's something we can come up with at some point. may not be pearly, but, we'll, you know, we, we'll, we can work on that. We can work on that. You need another project yeah. to work on. What you going to do without uh, I know it'll be interesting about we'll the see what's field. next but I think Mark and I are pretty much at the at the end here so uh, I think Mark and I's turn time at GAA is pretty much over by in July so yeah. we're going to get this all set up we'll have a trust all set up ready to go to have the field all the stuff you know yeah, so it's yeah. replaced and ready we'll have the money ready for within 10 years I would say to have another field you know just looking like just like this one it may last longer you know we don't know yeah. they don't know exactly how it goes but as I was telling Peter earlier, there's there's no amount of use that it you can 24/7 doesn't matter. UV lighting is the only thing that breaks those fields down over time, so it doesn't make any difference how much you use it. And you know, as long as you're brushing it and you know around the goal mouse in certain football areas, you'll wear the the rubber off and the sand might go into you know. So you need to sweep that in and stuff like that. But other than that, just User. Let the games begin. Yeah. So now we're, you know, we're working on this, you know, scoreboard. We've got a. Right. I've got we, a meeting got about over 40, there on Monday. We got about forty-one thousand dollars left, so we're going to have a stack committee meeting, and we have an agenda, and that's one of the agenda items is to look at because there still are some needs that were sort of put on as alternates. Uh, one is the portable mound, which right. they'd like to have, which you know runs around eighteen to twenty thousand, and then we still we have scoreboard, but we have to get it installed. So John's been working on that, trying to get a good price. And, you know, we believe both of those things can happen within the $41,000. Um, you know, some signage. Well, we have a donation from the Savings Bank, too. Are you for, the, for the scoreboard. For the scoreboard. Right. I'm so talking about the installation. You guys are familiar right? with that, George? Yes. 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 Well, you, they approved it. Yes, they, they approved the, it. Uh, toward that. So. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, we set up that agreement with the bank. And, and then we, there definitely needs to be some signage. So we want to talk about what signs right. do we need. Because... I mean, people can't bring their dogs on that well, field. That, that, that was also you a know, topic of people discussion can't at the bring safety committee. Red signs are being made. Yeah, they can't. They, they can't bring red have, Gatorade on have it. If they oh, spill it, it'll stain. For all the schools. Oh, you really? Can't, yeah, you can't wear metal cleats on it. You mm -hmm. know, so there's there's a number of things that that are in these warranties that the the, the warranties are in place as long as you follow the guidelines. Okay. If you don't follow the guidelines, you know, all bets are off. If so when you something say red happens. Gatorade, like. Colored Gatorade, any, any, so well, the blue, the red. Well, I just stain the field. It, it'll stain the field, yeah. but we don't want. It's that. not necessarily going to hurt the field. It's just yeah. going to make but it we don't want to unsightly. That's you know. That's right. That's We're not all. staining the field. Right. So you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure, we'll figure, figure out another. <laughs> Beginning every, within six <laughs> months, it'll be all bets are off and everybody's <laughs> going crazy. You know how it is. A new not something new. You want to protect it? I'll give it a year, Carol, because you'll be over there watching it. But you know, so it's. No, we we have to maintain that. You should just go christen it. I mean. 
<laughs> we have to make sure that it is maintained. Let go. Maintained. Mm. And that's, you know, something that we want to talk about, too. You know, what, what is the training? Who's going to go to it? Um, you know, we obviously are committed to maintaining it, but, you know, uh, maybe some, somebody from GA wants to also, you know, be aware of, you know, what kinds of things, you know, need to be done to it. And, you know, I, so I think it's just the final, the final little things. Yeah, and I think, you know, Peter Durkee's so good, he'll be involved in keeping oh, yeah. an eye on things, and, you know, he's a wealth right. of information and stuff, yeah. you know, all things like we, that. We're looking so. into painting the G, maybe, and that yeah. might be something with the extra 41,000, you know, so, you know, we, we just need to figure out, ex and there's no invoices that still need to be charged that, John, that's, the, that's everything's paid. Remember you asked me that? Right. So you, so you so have, that's four, the number. you have 41,000 before I make another donation, or not? No. Okay, so it's 41 including the 44 that I'm going right. to give you. Okay. Correct. There's forty-one thousand dollars left. Okay. You're, so you're, you agreed to the you agreed yeah. to the forty-four, which he's got in his pocket. Which is the lights. Um, because <laughs> you know we, we were looking at the lights, the two baseball lights as a phase two. You might remember that discussion, but I think um, GAA and 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 we agree completely. Um, felt that once you have that beautiful turf field, and in order to put those, we were always going to have the poles, but in order to put the lights in, you have to drag heavy machinery you across. We would put a very big crane on that field. We were worried about indentation and stuff yeah. like that. We didn't want any dents on there after. You know, you're not going to dent it by running on it, but a, you know, <laughs> some whatever ungodly number of that crane weighs could dent the field. I mean, they'd be okay. careful, but still. So we just decided that they decided you know, to do it all at let's, once. Let's get it done now, and That's it's going to work out. So, so we have forty-one, but then you have the twenty thousand dollars donation on top of that. You're not the, counting that. Nope. Okay. Because nope. That's so. So it's really I mean, the, we're probably going to be right about on the number. I'm I, thinking we are. It's, I think. I mean, it's it, it's probably going to be right, right on, the on the number. number. I, I'm thinking if we get lucky. You know, I want to get that scoreboard in there for forty thousand. That's I, I don't want twenty I, for the installation. Yeah, I don't want it to be. I think they, the guy had originally quoted me twelve to eighteen, and then you know the numbers we were getting from the contractor over there just weren't adding or up. 50, so now they were fifty-three. The, the contractor yeah. Quirk said for the installation and the purchase of a scoreboard. This is before we right. we had the donation. The total was fifty-three thousand. John thinks he can do that better, and my money's on John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we don't have we can't afford that that how that's going. So what we want to do is be able to pay for the lights. Which we're going to do for that. Then we're going to pay for the scoreboard and get the get the the uh, the mound too, which is going to be a, it's an 18 foot circumference mound. It's it's really really nice. I mean, we have a little portable mound you could use in a pinch, but it's not like the real mound that yeah. that you should use over there. So we get that those two things, and then if there's enough money to left paint the G. Then all's good with the then, world. Where, so where? what's the time frame for the installation um, of the scoreboard? I don't like actually know that. I'm gonna I have a meeting at Monday. Um, at 11:30 with the guy, so I'm not sure they can dig the hole right now right. with the way the ground is like that. But once they, I mean, I'm t these guys could probably do it in a week. They have their wow. own installation crews. Is we already have the wire is? set up to do two different areas, um, so that we could we could put it in two different places. We want to put it down on the right side, where it look basically in center field. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that it's going to work in that spot. If it doesn't work in that spot, there's the spot over on the hill. We don't like that spot anywhere near as well, so we're trying to avoid. We wired for it just in case, but we don't want we don't want to use that spot if we don't have to. Because mm -hmm. what'll happen is it's a beautiful spot up there. I don't know if you guys have walked up, and you can right up on right where you, you kind of goes that driveway goes right in front of the um, cafeteria right there. Yep. It's a real nice spot too. You can look right down onto the field and watch games right mm -hmm. from there. So we don't want that block if we can avoid no. it. And we, and down the road, we we may want to. Um, to look at investing actual stands mm. in in that hill. Yeah, you and can, so if you, you put can, if you put the scoreboard there, that's, that's not going to happen. Right. So I think we're trying to look long term. We you know it would be nice to have a couple of bathrooms, you know, down closer to the field. Right now for handicap parking and handicap bathrooms, we will we will put two porta potties there. Oh good. Um, so that you know people with the handicaps do not have to walk all the way up to the school but it would be nice if there's a way to do something in relationship to you know uh, some some seating particularly on the hill because we will have three sets of stands that can be on the third grade right you third. have the portables now we I haven't have seen those so yeah we have three because remember we had the damage on the upper fields and Mike got insurance coverage right. you know it bought us right. three we, there's one there now, but there's two additional. How much does that hold? Do you know how much that? Each well, one of those? I have to ask Mike, but I'm thinking that, the, I bet you that holds. What do you think? I mean, it's ten have or ten them? or twelve. Or, them, so. they're, they're pretty. They're pretty long. 
I bet you there's enough for, you know, at least 10 or 12 people, big people, you know, on each of the things. And there's probably five rungs. Hmm. I think they so hold think 50 or 60 five. people. So I, so you but, but if you, to 180. yeah, and that's just for now. Right. And then if you put seating, you know, up on the hill, you know, is Mike coming tonight? Well, I thought he was, but right. he's not here. Okay. <laughs> One of the things by not by having the portable bleachers is a lot of flexibility. That field is—I don't know if you guys—it's a lot bigger than it was. Yes. I mean, yeah. It's, it is a lot it's unbelievable yes. with how it was cut back into the hill and cleaning out down the left field line down there. All that crap come out of it. It's unbelievable. It's got to be, I'd say it's 25% larger than it was, wow. you know, than, than That's it was long. before. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go stand down at home plate and look out there, you go, wow, this is really a good size field now. It's so much bigger than it was. It's, yeah. You know. After we got through the rain retaining wall issue. You know, yeah, it, well, it, that seemed to work out okay. It actually, uh, I think it benefited us. We, yeah, we it, actually looked it, at it, it and said we think we got up. a better deal. Yeah, it did. It did well, work there out. were a lot of issues. How many times did oh, we say, this was oh, not my an goodness, easy project, is this going to happen? Yeah, right? Yeah, it's just, it's amazing how it all, you know, eventually just, it's one hurdle after another. I you know. think they're never going to end, but, you well, know. Well, that's why I appreciate sure. both of you um, sticking through it because it's so worth it. I'm sure it was very frustrating. Well, there you know, points like I talking. was a little frustrated, I will admit. But yeah, you know. <laughs> no, I know. But you, and you could have you could have thrown in the towel many times, and you, you didn't, which I nope, I appreciate. There that. was no throwing in the towel, right? No, John? there was no throwing there was in no the throwing. towel. There's there's points where you run into roadblocks that you don't think should be roadblocks, but that's just red right. tape, and yeah. you know. There's a lot of hard work and dedication. Yeah, here, you know, so. there's a lot of red tape and stuff Very like this that so you wish you could get, you know, expedite these things in town projects a little bit better. But that's not for this board to deal with. It's <laughs> that's another axe to grind and another whole setting so mm -hmm. but regardless is a nice field over there and oh, at the yes. end everybody that needed to come through came through so it was good and now we can really improve the quality of our other fields so That's we can right. go from having some of the worst perceived right. worst fields in the region to some of the nicest fields in the region yeah I mean I don't, even the upper field when the way it worked out we got a bigger field up top too you know we had we ended up yeah. expanding that I mean that had see. some foibles with it but that's gonna be a nicer setup too when that's all reworked and seeded there. and stuff like that it, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be very very nice the way and they, we, they you put know, a berm we can up rest there. fields now because yeah. they're you know so you could actually have a field for a season so that you weren't trampling it down to the mud we, and we need that i don't know if you guys and then the new pembroke them, fields we are run the grass online. off our fields we really do oh i know I mean, west street is yeah, you know, but they shouldn't, they shouldn't really mud. need West Street in the future, but yeah. we'll see. Um, but, you know, because those new fields at, at um, Pembroke are all going to be beautiful. And remember, when the school comes down, there's going to be a full-size soccer slash lacrosse mm -hmm. yep. size field, which the town really needs. And there's going to be a pony-sized baseball field because there's right. not enough baseball fields. Yep. So I think that that's, that's just gravy. Plus, there's going to be a small soccer field where the new septic system is. So okay. that so, there'll be a little soccer field there, two baseball fields, and then another f sort of flat field, but not undesignated. Yeah. Which is um, okay. And then Jimmy Demento, you know, is probably going to get his project skate on um, the skate skate mm -hmm. park. But I think there were some fields affiliated yeah, there's, there's, with there's that as well. There. So okay. I think that you know, I think the town's need for fields isn't yeah. going to be as urgent well, as we're, it was when, much eight years ago. Right. We're, in three years, you know, we're actually by 2016, That's we'll right. be in very good position to start really getting these fields into excellent condition. Mm -hmm. I mean, excellent. Yeah. There's no reason, no that, reason. Right. that we shouldn't have, you know, kids to play on grass. It would be exciting for the people with younger children in this town because they, they really should get to play on good facilities. Mm -hmm. So, Definitely. you know. When I first started working with GA, remember, John, I had those meetings and we sat in Pearly. And, um, you know, we, we were out at that point, you know, there was a little financial arrangement, so much per kid or something, yep. and it just wasn't working out. It's right. like, what can we do together? And it's just been a, an amazing partnership. Yeah, well, that know? started with, it. let's go to a project-based thing. Instead right. of GAA paying $5 per kid to, to the schools, he said, you know, how about, how about we do projects and start fixing these places up? And it starts with the baseball field. And, you know, and there's dugouts, and they get grass, and now you get good clay on those fields. And then we have one of the best baseball fields in the Cape Ann League. Yep, and do. then from that, everything just grows, and now you have either ideas, you know, let's do a turf well, Remember, you know? we actually had a plan. It's, it's, we right. had a written plan. What were we going to do, you know, three years right. out? And we followed the plan, and we, some of us started talking about the turf field, and could this really happen? And lo and behold, you know, through well, a lot of had challenging a situations, sometimes it, it did happen. So, you know, no, and I it's so I nice. I was at the beautiful. basketball game the other night, and there was some long-time Georgetown residents, you know, that both said to me, oh, I love seeing that field out there. 
that is just such a great thing for this town. And these are obviously people who believe in sports, and but they're like, whoever thought that would happen, it's just beautiful. And so, you know, I, I think it's, I think the town's something for the town to be very proud of. Yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, agree. I agree. I really do. I think it's going to be a great community thing. I hope that, uh, you know, the vision is that we can connect the GAA program to the high school programs a little bit better than we're doing now and, and try to make it so that the high school gets more support for their programs so that the younger kids are down there watching them and, you know, that way it feeds all the way up into the high school and we get a little more of a little more continuity. Mm -hmm. um, that's the hope. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how that turns out over the next few years, but I think it'll be so. It'll so be John's good. here because you know how we keep going back. Is it a school project? Is it a town project? <laughs> so when we had to make the donation, of course the town is looking for the donation so they can make sure there's not a cash flow problem paying the bills. So I mentioned to John that we had a meeting tonight and the school committee could accept the donation. And then when I was at a meeting the other day, um, department head meeting, Mike said, "Oh." They should come to the meeting on the 26th or 27th. I have to get to the date because she they should. Have, the the, the town right. should. The selectmen should approve <laughs> the donation. So, so it is I, a town. So I think it, it is the town. But I just want. I didn't. I wanted John to come. <laughs> this is a check, and it is for, <laughs> I'm here holding up my he's end of the he's obligation. Up his end of the, the second part. half. The other check. one was 450,000. <laughs> this is just 44. So totally. I mean, you, you can certainly accept it if you want, and, but he's, it's still going to have to be accepted by the board of selectmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all could accept it. Well, we could all accept it. Why wouldn't? Is why there not? All accept wrong with it. That? No, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> okay. um, but the official vote will be apparently the board of selectmen's <laughs> official <laughs> acceptance of it. But I, I wanted John to come because I, I wanted to personally thank him and Mark. You know, it's not, he's nice of him to give credit to everybody else. But without the GAA, without their vision, without their continued work on this project, it would have been difficult to see it to the end. Right, and all the families um, too that and still the families support the that GAA. supported I think it's it, a great provided program. twenty-five dollars of it. membership. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's been a true town project, Dedicated. but I, I oh, definitely want to. It's really about the townspeople. They, if yeah. they support the program, right. and you have people with vision in there, you can do stuff like this. If you just get a plan together and you and you and you go forward, but mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we need good facilities for our kids, the young kids, to play on, and this just helps our program grow, and hopefully, it helps the high school programs get mm -hmm. better. And it so, it's really, it's it's really the townspeople are to thank. I mean. They pay for the CPA money, and That's the, you exactly know, right. yeah. they, the two hundred thousand mitigation right. for they, soil. You know, so a lot of the stuff is, you know, the people of Georgetown have really yeah. stepped up, and you know, hopefully they'll be happy with what uh, they've gotten. Kind of right. to that quickly to that end is there going to be kind of a formal opening dedication we have talked about it i mean I think we haven't we, come that's up one with of the things stack want, i wanted to talk with stack about we should definitely when we dedicate the field to jim collimore we should yeah. definitely have something but jim demento had suggested gee wouldn't it be fun to just have some kind of event you know like that he said park and, yeah, yeah park and record in, in the parking lot of course without hot chocolate right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's Sorry, the way you know, to break in the field right there we'll not stay in the field yeah, right. we won't be um, staying in the field. so i don't know I, we don't know about Sometime. that but it would be great yes to have something that the town could i mean uh, the timing of it to have a grand opening i mean it's it's zero degrees. They're not outside. using it. I know. I know. I know. Well, like you know. Definitely. You can yeah. definitely. Yeah. But definitely yeah. in the fall. Like getting yeah. Fall. Well, what were you going to say? Beginning of the spring. Baseball? Yeah. Spring. Oh, this spring. is the beginning spring. of baseball season? Yeah. I mean, I think that's something we can we, we have the parade and town mm -hmm. parade. And yeah. Do yeah. something yeah. special. Maybe yeah. bring those two events together or not. I don't yeah. know. Well, yeah. that's, yeah. those I mean, are all good ideas. Yeah. I guess we'll have the stack committee, you know, go through this and try to hash out some some good plan to try to have the people come down and walk on it and you know get a look and turn the lights on and have them look at that I mean it's just it's unbelievable and it's yeah it's, it is uh, it's like field, down it's the like street, field like of dreams behind Dunkin Donuts all of a sudden you're like whoa what is yeah. that the yeah. it just looks awesome it, it is does. it's like that in that movie field of dreams yeah. yeah that's it yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really it's right. really good but we do appreciate all that you've done absolutely and the GAA they've been great unbelievable and the people and the people that paid for it I know I know you. Re you. I feel well, bad for all the people supportive. that don't get any benefit out of it because it took ten years to raise the money, but that's the way it goes. And actually, it's probably a little longer than that when it's all said yeah. and done because yeah. we started with probably twenty thousand. That you know, but then after that, it's been just a, a continuous you know ten year yeah. grind to get to the point where we could afford to do something like this. So now they're going to start over and replace it in ten more years. Yeah. So. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but just think well, about that. You know, like 30 community years, community 30, 30 years, you, you know, you can asset. enjoy a very... Mm -hmm. As, as long as the people in the town don't let their kids sit around on these things and do this all the time and not, <laughs> not play sports and be active, we'll be okay. But whenever they all want to play on those little devices and, and not do anything else, it's my pet peeve in the world is just to have these kids sitting around. They got to get out there and get active, you know, yeah. talk to each other. And also yeah. watch it from when we were yeah. kids. Well, there's nothing to do sure. other than run around and do around something. And yeah, you went out and played. That's what you did. <laughs> I mean, we probably would have been doing the same thing if we had all this nice technology that there, there is available today, but, you know, there wasn't, so you had to go mm. do something. But I hope we don't get too far away from it. Yeah, you know? I agree. You know, I mean, yeah, the, the sports experience is where kids build friendships and they oh, build, you know, the building blocks of sportsmanship and spirit and teamwork. And, I mean, so much, so much. I, I mean, I'm going to play hockey tonight at 10 o'clock, and I'm still playing with three other guys I played college hockey with 30 yeah. years ago. <laughs> to give you an idea of what sports do. And that's exactly what we want to you do, know, is build a lifelong love of these sports that you can you know, yeah. enjoy. I went to, a, I went to an to alumni come. thing that was a you know, hockey game and saw a bunch of the guys. And you know, it, it's, it's just that type of a thing you don't get from just, nope. from sports do that. They bring they people do. together right. and yep. the do. common interest and it allows kids to get to be part of a group and, and friends and learn about commitment and dedication and sportsmanship mm -hmm. and all that stuff. There's really, there's no, no better environment for young kids, at least in my opinion. And for the parents as we go to the games. I, I know. know. Oh, <laughs> believe me, it's crushing when it's over. I know. It's I'm an true. empty nester yeah, now, and it I is no it fun yeah. for all you guys getting to still go I always go tell people, I say, wait, you're going to miss this when you're oh. not doing it anymore. A lot oh, of it's terrible. The games. It's absolutely terrible. You know? <laughs> John just, still just John saying. still travels all over yeah, to watch Yeah, I still his travel for play, it, but so. you know that's coming to a, an abrupt end here yeah. too. My daughter's graduating from college. I know she is, and, yeah. You know, so it's, you know, it just boom, and you're like, wow. <coughs> so now they can go and watch you play. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't even let them come. We just go play at 10 o'clock at night so nobody can see us. <laughs> the fact that you can still do that is a very good thing. Not everybody can say that. Yeah, well, so. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's a saying that the older you get, the better you were. I don't live by that. I can't even remember the player that I used to be. I have no idea what I remember is what I'm dealing with now. Nah. It's not good. <laughs> so, John. Do you want to take this? So, we can take it if you okay. want. And we'll, tr we'll make sure it gets to the right person. But Perfect. you might you might have to go to the Board of Selectmen meeting well, and just kind of sit there and let, let them. Let know, whatever. Either Mark or I can them, show up for that. Make them happy. Let them appreciate you again. Like yeah, you. no, it's, that's a little too, I think you guys have done enough. A lot of TV enough. time. Yeah, that's a, I don't need that. <laughs> it's always yeah. it's a pleasure to accept it. So. Yeah. Thank you. So do you want it? Do you want to accept it? Sure, we will. It? Okay. Is it, it's exactly. in the 44,000, right, yeah. John? Oh, one thing that Mike is looking for, which would be easy for you to do, is nice. the, when they go to when you go to the board of selectmen, they he would just like a little a blurb, literally a blurb that says how you would like the money used. So they just want you to say, this is a donation for forty four thousand dollars for the purpose of installation of two you know sets yeah, of lights. No problem. That, that, that it's I said it would be painless. Yeah. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to accept the donation from the Georgetown Athletic Association in the amount of forty four thousand dollars for the installation of two lights, two additional lights at the new turf field. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's the easiest vote you took all year, right? <laughs> <laughs> a, a happy vote. It's a happy vote. Who's, who's Captain Pingree? Yeah, I think Russ thank was messing you. with me. <laughs> the discussion is thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, yeah. thank, thank you, you for much. making the time to yes. come thank tonight, you. too. Have fun tonight in hockey. Yeah, yeah. have fun. I don't want to hear you broke your leg or something. Yeah. Oh, just <laughs> <laughs> Bye, John. Very nice. Okay. Um, that doesn't go in the notes, Laura. <laughs> okay, so then we are moving along to the. Um, Excuse me. So oh, sure. Why are you worried about the check? I'm just kidding. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> Sorry. I thought she was really worried about the check. <laughs> to the um, canine search. Okay, protocol. so before we do that, though, I just wanted to um, share oh, a little, little more specific news um, about DECA today. So actually, it was great. Michael, Pam, and Barbie all judged. Um, and uh, Donna McFadden, who's the state chairman, says, we never get that kind of support from school committees and you know, superintendents. So you know, I, I, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your, to out of your time to, to um, spend was, the day. It was so much fun. Yeah. It really was. Like, it gave me an opportunity to see. Because what I was looking to get out of it 
was I saw how well our kids did, but I wanted to see what their competition right. was like. Right. Th that was what I was hoping, you know, and I said, wow, yeah. it's amazing. Like, all those kids, they were just dressed so nice, and they, you know, are looking in your eye and shaking your hand. It was very impressive, mm -hmm. you know. And our kids, obviously, we didn't judge them, but they just looked so confident, and they just had that, you know, they just really, like they were it was very impressive. Together, and a sense of purpose. Yeah, and, and even the people that ran it, too, the, the DECA they individuals do. They've did got a great that job. down to a science. Yeah, it was nice. They really, and they moved the location so that Division 5 and Division 6, they used to go together. And, right. and the decision oh, right. was made so to separate them. So yeah. half of the group, half of the schools were at Endicott College today, and half of the schools were at Merrimack. Oh, we were all we were at, at Merrimack. Merrimack. Oh, yeah, me too. So yeah, there, <clears throat> there, were four, there were four um, districts that were in our group, um, North Andover, um, Peabody, and Danvers. Um, Danvers, and then Georgetown. And <laughs> it's interesting because each of those schools, you know, like North Andover, for example, has 1,800 students in their high school. They bring a team of 150, 200 kids. Georgetown brought a team of 33, which is actually a really great number. Um, and uh, when all was said and done, because I stayed for the awards, 28 of those students qualify for the states. So 28 of those students will go on to the states. Uh, eight of the students finished first. Um, 11 students finished second. So of ha half, more than half of the students finished either first or second in their wow. category. Uh, five students finished third and four students finished fourth. That's so great. hopefully, and there is a process that might be able to include everyone to go to the states. That's something called an academic bowl or something. There's some other little thing um, that students can maybe earn their way there. But the fact, you know, that's a pretty high percentage. Um, of the categories that the students participated in, that that they had some some placement. So I did want to I did want to share that with you because I I, yeah, I don't that's think great. that's um, <clears throat> I mean they a lot of places brought 200 kids and they don't have this kind of percentage. So this is consistent though. That's one thing about the DECA program. It's a solid solid program thanks to Lisa and Le um, and um, Liz. Um, every year they they come out doing very very well. Um, and remember, we're only a five-year program. They, from year one, they started out. I mean, some of these programs have been 15, 20, 30 years. So it, it's real. They credit. deserve a lot of credit. I'm, we're, I was so proud of the kids. They were so excited, and they had their trophies. And you know, but one of the things that's so nice is how much they encourage each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it. You know, certainly they're looking for themselves, but they they are very tight. They really encourage each other. They're very proud of each other. You know, so it's just a, it's just nice to watch. Um, and I'm always happy every year that I that I stay and and uh, spend time with them and and their advisors. They're they're great. They're a great group. Yeah, but anyway, I wanted to share the results. So maybe um, Peter, do you want to come on up? So I so I tried to explain to you in the orange notes, and then I tried to explain to you in the letter, um, sort of what the purpose of this is, why we're doing it. And you know, normally, if we were trying to do something that had to do with like a like a security strategy, we wouldn't be discussing it in open session. We would be discussing it in an executive session. But because this is really something that we're we want to be public, we're going to post it. We're going to share it with parents, you know, students. Um, we felt that it was important to just talk about it with you in open session. Um, letting people know, you know, it's, it, that it's coming and, and why we're doing it and what we're hoping to accomplish as a result of it. So, um, as I said in the orange notes, we've been working very closely with the police chief, who is phenomenal to work with, um, and um, the administrative team um, at the high school, middle high school. Um, and uh, we, were, we were able, Donnie was able to get his hands on um, a document after we talked it through, like what we were looking to do. He was able to find something from the Pittsfield Public Schools that we were able to. Se several, actually. I think we looked at four of them. Yeah, so we, we were like, able, we like, we like this the best. The best. <clears throat> um, but we made it our own. You know, the, the first part of the letter is really about what, how we feel we, you know, what our philosophy is um, and, and why we're doing it. And I think the, one of the main motivations is, you know, just 
you know, all the information we're learning nationally and from the district attorney's office and local police departments and, and maybe what we, we sort of know based on you know, experiences we have, that, you know, the, the drug issues in terms of what's available and what's around, you know, I mean, all drugs are, are, are not acceptable in schools and all drugs can be potentially dangerous. But the stuff that we're seeing now, you know, some of the heroin that's available and it's very inexpensive. And obviously we know that there was recently a drug uh, bust in town. Um, you know, the, the, the number of, as I put in the orange notes from the, the statistics from the district's attorney's office, that just in one year alone, there were 250 overdoses and 33, I think, what did I say, 33 fatalities. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, this stuff changes lives. When you start talking about heroin and, and, and drugs of that nature, you know, I think all of us, you know, as committed we are, as we are to no drugs, it, 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 increased our, it increased our concern. It raised it to another level. It raised it it's to a another strongly level. strongly addictive substances. Strongly addictive. And, and you know, I, I read a book that the district attorney's office had given to, to people that had attended some of his, his workshops called High Society. And it's a very interesting book, but the main parts of the book really talk about, you know, the, the drugs of the 60s and 70s are not the drugs of today. Um, not even the same, even if, like marijuana is an example. Even marijuana isn't the same. It's laced with some uh, much more, Pam knows much more about this because this is really something she spends a lot of time thinking about and studying about. Um, but, you know, the, the chemicals that are, that are being found in, in those drugs are, are much more um, addictive and, and could seriously hurt somebody. The THC T levels the T have, have gone up like by six to nine times since the 80s, the early 80s. Right. So. so I think, you know, one of the things that I think is important, and, and Peter and I, you know, really believed strongly in this, is that, you know, the best way to really help people understand this is through education, through, through good education, um, and through doing things that are going to um, inform people so that they can potentially make the right choice when it's their time to make a choice, potentially. You know, bringing dogs into the schools is not our intention is not to scare the kids. It's not to play games and say, oh, we're going to walk the kids in and everybody's going to get nervous for a day. That's not really our intention. Our intention is to continually reinforce that in our school, our culture, we want our culture to be no drugs. And um, this is one more tool in our arsenal, you know, that will, that will, we would use as a, definitely use as a deterrent, right? I mean, we definitely would see it as a deterrent. But we want to start it off by doing something educational, like having uh, state police bring the dogs in. Peter's going to organize an assembly with the police chief, and I think in the district attorney's district, office, right? Yeah. And you're all welcome to come if you would like to come. I, I always get a kick out of these school times, but it's at like what nine fifty-four or something yeah, like well, that. Yeah, we're trying to do it in a period. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you don't be, don't get there at nine fifty-five. You know, you'll be, you'll be late. But um, it, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, the hope there is that they, they will set it up in such a way that they'll actually do some simulations. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the hope is that um, that we really educate kids for uh, all of the elements that could be involved. So, you know. Uh, this this is what could happen at, at the school level. This is what, what, what could happen at, with the police. Um, this is what, what could happen with the courts. And this is what it's going to look like. This is how effective it is. So we, we think, um, talking to Chief Cudmore, that um, we'll have a dog in like a knapsack and um, some kind of contraband in there and we'll demonstrate how it works and how the dog will will react to that. So, um, you know, everybody knows uh, it, it's not a big mystery. Everybody knows how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And um, then, you know, make good choices. Mm -hmm. Make good choices. And, you know, there are different, um, you can search different things. Um, so, you know, you could search just the, just the, um, the parking lot. You could search just the lockers. You could search just the bags. You could search a number of things. And, um, you know, so we, again, that would be part of the discussion with the, with the, the children. So, because we don't want, it'll always be an unannounced search, but we don't want there to be any questions about, you know, kind of how it will be handled, 
you know, um, you know, I think it'd be very interesting because, as uh, the chief has explained, you know, it can be traces of, you know, drugs in their pocket. You know, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, an ounce of marijuana. You know, um, so I, I think that that's, you know, I think it's an ed it's an opportunity for education. I think, and um, we think and we, that and that we will want set the kids tone. to know because this is going to be somewhat time consuming, right. and um, what schools normally do is they go into lockdown. Right. So. You know, we don't want kids panicking and, and having no idea, What's you know, going? why they're being locked down and what kind of danger they could be in or anything like that. So, so uh, you know, we developed this protocol where we will... Uh, go into lockdown initially, but then I will make an announcement, explain what's going on. So go into lockdown anytime the search is being conducted, before the search is called. Before the search is called. Okay. Yeah. And then he said he'll go on. He'll he'll explain okay. that it's a that it's a search. Okay. Can yeah. you explain what lockdown means? Well, we have a lockdown. We have um, two kind of safety protocols. One is an evacuation, right. and one is where we don't want you to go out. We want you to stay in. So um, we have a, a code name for it, um, no big secret, Code, code blue. blue. And basically uh, everyone has a, a place to go, and most of it is in your classroom. You, there's a, a wall that's not very visible to the outside, and you sit on the floor and be as quiet as possible. And while that's going on, uh, the, we're actually waiting for the police to respond. And then uh, as soon as the police you know, get there, then then they're in charge of um, the situation. So mm -hmm. um, we've never had to do it real. Um, we we I think we we do it very well in our drills, and we do it um, uh, at all times. But we I think the second to the last time we did it, we did it during lunchtime. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's our most vulnerable time. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we want to practice. Uh, you know. Any scenario, so. So you mentioned the state police. Would uh, Police Chief Cudmore be involved? Would the Georgetown oh, yes. Police yeah. would be involved? Yes. Okay, and would you the, get the, the explorers, the, the students that are involved in the police explorer program? To Ooh, that would be up to the chief. I never okay. talked about I, that. I, I think yeah. the chief okay. would probably say that the you know the only the people that need to be involved and only the people that need to know would be involved. And then after the fact, we, we certainly would inform anybody who, who does need to know the information. Um, but as he as he's pointed out, when he has to do something in town, you know, when he's investigating something, he, he very few people actually know what's going on. Right. And then it happens, and then he will appropriate. Well, I mean more in the assembly. I don't mean in, oh, in, in a assembly. search. I don't know that we've... Got that I'm, all planned. I'm, I'm thinking about I'm guessing. The I'm thinking not. Yeah, no, that, I, I, I wasn't planning on event. it. I, I was okay. just planning I, I just, on the chief. Yeah. The, the ch I think the chief I, I and the, the experts, I think, would be yeah. involved yeah. in. Because there is so that. much to learn. And just thinking about you know kids that are considering law enforcement for mm -hmm. a career path, um, I think it'd be interesting to to learn about the dogs and how they're trained and where they live and. You know, uh, you you'll have a demonstration. As yeah, you well, you know, so depend now that you mentioned that, do. depending upon how, how much time things. it takes, yes, mm -hmm. then right. we could open that up for a Q and A. And anytime we have speakers come in, we always let kids that are interested come up and. Mm -hmm. So talk. I, I want to get clear. So the, the the police come in. You explain to the kids that we're going to start doing these searches. Yeah. When we have a search, we will be in code blue. Right? Yes. And then, and this is during the assembly. This is what you're telling them. Yeah. Then the police come in and say, okay, we're going to bring a dog through. We're going to explore uh, the parking lot or the lockers or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, probably on stage. Yeah, you'll do that on stage. A demonstration. Yeah. This is what the dog looks like when the dog has found something. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's right. And then are you going to say what happens after the dog finds something? Yes, that's what yes. you want to talk about. The, what are the consequences potentially? Yes. Yeah, yes. For, I mean, all of the consequences. So the school, what will happen at school, what will happen with the police, and what will happen in the courts. That, that's why. So, so I will do the school part. Chief Cudmore will do the police part. And we have a representative from the district attorney's office who will talk about court involvement. OK, great. And the juvenile justice system and yep. where that will take okay. that. Is this, there's, there's kind of a big splash kind of introducing the new policy, that's not the right word. Is there, and, and this is 
I'm sure getting way ahead of it, but a plan for next year mm -hmm. since there's going to be a new population in the school, sort of? Mm -hmm. Well, well, we talked about that and we wrote that. Um, uh, I kind of want to play that by ear. Mm -hmm. You know, I think my biggest question is right now that we really haven't finalized yet is, you know, we're unique because we're a middle high school. So we have to be sensitive to the younger kids in the school. So we're going to keep the sixth graders out of this completely. Um, we thought about uh, bringing the eighth graders into this assembly. Uh, we thought that that is probably something that we want to do, and we're kind of up in the air about the seventh grade right now. So we don't really, we haven't really finalized that yet. Does the would the lockdown for this would it be both the middle and the high school? Yeah. So they're so if the middle schoolers don't, and I, and I understand them not being involved in the assembly and all that, but are they going to know that it's not anything for them to worry about? Yes. Because they're not going to know Everybody will what's hear happening. it. Because we, we don't have the luxury of having a totally segregated right. uh, middle school anymore. Right. So there are always high school classes up there. Mm -hmm. So right. um, mostly. And uh, so everybody kind of has to, has to know, uh, you know, what Just to expect. Just as long as you know that it's something right. scary going on. Yeah. So this letter that you put together, when does that go up? Um, we were going to send it out uh, the day of the assembly. Right. We, I think you were going to, I'm trying to remember, we were posting it around something about the 12th or the 13th. And I thought we were going to I thought we were going to have the, the assembly on the 15th. That's yeah. what I thought. I have it in my book. I, I didn't was, write it. Yeah, my hope would be that it would go out before, before and maybe yeah. the parents would be able to talk with the kids yep. before mm -hmm. they That's go right. down to the assembly. That's just... A thought that I was, you know, I, I think it was before, especially if you are going to include seventh and eighth graders. Yep. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the the thing is, I mean, I I might not, I don't know if I can do two or something. We we don't f all fit in the auditorium. Sure. Yeah, sure. So it might be like a closed circuit situation for the middle school kids in the cafeteria. Um, so we we really have to. I don't you know, think that's, that's not a bad out. idea, though. No, I, mean, I don't no, think that's no. no. But I think it's. Uh, um, I think the intention was we were going to send it out and and post it prior to the assembly, which was going to be on the fifteenth, so that it beginning to give advance notice. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. I think. agree. Yeah, yeah advance yeah. notice. Why can't you do two back-to-back -back assemblies? Well, I don't know if the groups. other people are available. Oh. I don't if know can, if, the, do do if the, do the dogs have a very limited uh, attention, attention span, span and uh, yeah, <laughs> so, well, and I don't know if the people from the DA or right what the chief schedule is like, so we, <laughs> we'll have to talk about that, but I mean, if we did it closed circuit in the CAF, like, you know, we do town meeting like that, so we, we do graduation we, like that. Yeah, and graduation, so it, like this TVs and yeah. uh, it, it'd be. I think it's effective. Mm. And it might be a little less intimidating for the younger Exactly. Guys. Yeah. Know, maybe. Exactly what I was thinking, yeah. I um I just want to thank thank you for doing this. Um you know, we all know growing up it's so different now. You know, what our kids are experiencing is nothing like, you know, the technology. Just everything is so different. So, um I think it's just a real issue and I think mm -hmm. you know, what you're doing because I know you don't want to do it to no. catch kids. I, mm. I get that. And I think that's a great message to let them know that, that we're not doing it because we want all these kids right. to get in we trouble. We don't want we to respect the school culture in a, in a way right. that says we don't yeah. trust the, you. The, right. the, goal, the goal is to keep drugs out of the school. Right. So, that, I mean, and that's they, the goal. If they and kids to remind know them that, that they need to make good it. choices, right? Right. Yeah. Mm. And we really feel that we, we need to do this assembly for us because it's new to the, you know, the town. Um, right. Talking to Chief Cudmore, uh, we kind of think that it hasn't happened for at least 15 years. Mm. So, um, you know, we need to, it, 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 it's, it's, for all intents and purposes, it's new. So we, we want to introduce it and, you know, kind of demystify it. And um, mm -hmm. Right. Well, there's so many new things just popping up. You know, you hear about just different things all the time that these kids are subjected to. and. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it is scary as a parent um, just to, you know, have the kids have to deal with it. 
but I think you're doing a great job with, with this. I think this is a, a perfect opportunity for us to just, like you had said, just to deter and just to let the mm -hmm. kids know that we're on top of it and we're not gonna allow it. Um, and also that it's, ju it's not to get anybody in trouble. We don't want no. to see that happen. No, we're we're very serious about keeping a safe environment. <clears throat> in right. All of um, our schools. I just had a, it's kind of like a what if question. Yeah. Like when you do a search and say, I know sometimes during Code Blue there's like those very few kids that are in the bathroom or something that like get stuck. Will that like mess up a search or anything? Because the dots. No, you know? uh, it won't. Uh, we'll hopefully, uh, you know, I guess we should, we should tell kids that, um, you know, if, if uh, the announcement is made, um, that uh, if you're in the bathroom, go to your last yeah. class. Yeah, because usually they say like stay yeah. in the bathroom. Right, or right. But but I have but you you know I could never say next time you have cold blue because yeah. God forbid mm -hmm. that we'll have to have a real one between now and then. Yeah. Uh, but so I I will mention at the assembly. Good point that you know if you are in there after I say the purpose of this is, then, then go you to you. Come out. Yeah. yeah. How long is one of the searches expected to take? I know. I know. You don't know until you it search. happens. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know because I have. I've. We've know. never done it at the school before. I don't know how many dogs they're going to bring in because right. that matters. Mm -hmm. um, Is it like an hour or two? Like I'm just totally. Oh, I wouldn't think so. so. I wouldn't think so. I would think it would be under an hour. Okay. Yeah. They they just did this recently at my husband's school in Greenfield, and he said there were six or seven dogs. Okay. So it's a. An and how big is that school in? Mm, Four hundred kids. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And have any, so I know you mentioned Pittsfield that you liked their, mm -hmm. um, the way they did it. Locally, do we know of any schools that have done this recently? I, I don't know recently, but I, I did consult with some local principals and uh, they, they do it periodically. Some, some schools are actually getting away from it. Mm -hmm. So um, Many, many do it if they have a reason. You know, it you know, you, you don't want it to be reactionary. You want it to be in response to something. Um, so, you know, sometimes, you know, people, some districts do it that way. Others do it sort of every year they do it. You don't know when it's going to happen. I think when I was talking, I, I, I want to say Whittier, Whittier Vogue Tech does, does yeah, it Yeah, I, I spoke with them. Yeah, I think they, they might do it, you know, annually, but it's at a different time. So I, I think that's up to us how we, we want to how we want to handle it but as I said it's it's really you know an opportunity here to just continue to strengthen the message about you know what we want our culture to be in our schools and um, and that everybody has a shared responsibility to to make good choices and maintain that culture right and what about the teachers how how have their um, responses been they don't know yet it, oh. so uh, I, I'm gonna yeah. be uh, discussing this at the faculty meeting on Monday right we, so we we've been lot. really uh, working hard at planning it because um, one of the things is that you know we don't have a plan we don't have a protocol because we've never done it so we've right. done our research and found what we liked and customized it and uh, yeah. now we're rolling it out so mm -hmm. you are you're number one they're number two and the <laughs> kids are number three okay so, Mr. Murphy is here. I don't want to put you on the spot. If you'd like to respond as a teacher, like what you think, great. If not, that's fine too. No, I think it's great. In some ways, it's long overdue. When I first started, um, the former administrative staff uh, had a, a project that was set up, I believe, with the, with the local sheriff's department where. Um, a younger member of the law enforcement task force was brought in as a student. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it, it definitely kind of um, it put a scare into students, and I think it yielded some results. I don't know all the results that it yielded, but I think it made students, um, you know, more aware of, you know, the school's a safe place that drugs should not, you know, be part of. So uh, these things, they have to happen every few years to kind of make everyone aware. So, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Sure. What about you, Vanessa? 
Thank you. I think it's definitely a good idea. Um, it'll, like, keep the safety. And, like, I don't think kids will be, like, offended by it or anything. They'll be, like, they understand that you just want to keep it safe, and that right. it makes sense. I think that That's that good. is important to us. That was that was a lot of our discussion. Of the whole is, trust. Is the whole issue. trust thing. You know, if you have a community and, you know, you, you want everybody to feel safe there, part of that is that they can feel like people trust them you know the majority of students you know aren't engaging in a lot of behaviors that people assume they're because they're young kids they're engaging in and I think this is a this is an opportunity to um, to be able to say to them you know we, we we trust you we're doing this to make sure everybody's you know safe I mean I sure I'm sure it'll be like a little thing to get used to like the yeah. first time might be a little yeah. scary people, scary but yeah. like it'll, it'll be a norm Eventually. Yeah, it does, it does be <laughs> just like cold, just like cold blue became yeah. the norm, right? And everybody understands the reason we do that is if we were ever in an emergency situation, we need to we need to know that our plan's going to work. Right. Yeah. And so, how are you going to get the e this this letter out? Were you going to do U.S. mail? Were you going to um, probably email email it yeah. like through the morning announcements and, yeah. and, po and post, post it. it post it on the on the web. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's scheduled for January fifteenth, which is Thursday. Yeah, for next week. Okay. I want to thank Laura for getting this out because if I told you how many versions of this came out today. Um, <laughs> yeah, you after, hold the presses, I read looked them. at yeah. it, and then I had the attorney look at it, and there were yeah. some more revisions after I thought the, we already had a final one. And then, so thank I think you, this Laura. Number five. <laughs> yeah, it's about it's five okay, or six. Is, <laughs> six. Okay. Well, you didn't have plenty of time. Well, that really, I mean, it's not like a lot it's of work happening into it. tomorrow. You know. Yeah. Well, we were tomorrow. trying to. We had our timeline. We were trying to. Okay, we're going to talk to the committee. Then we're going to. Mm -hmm. You know, we had our. We had to back back it up. You know, back backwards design. We used exactly. to yeah, decide. Right. You know. Yeah, but I, um, I appreciate. Yeah, it. I, I think it's a. I think it's a good piece of work, and yeah. I, I think it's um, going to be useful. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have the Pembroke um, transition report. Margaret, you want to come on up? So Mike must not be coming. Mike must not be coming. <laughs> Um, and fine. Joan, by the way, Joan, Joan's been having some issues with her muscles and stuff. So she's she did mm -hmm. go to a doctor today. So I, you know, she she just didn't feel like she could make it tonight. So she's really a good trooper most of the time. I know. She, and Donna Strait, we we have to make a decision on that too because Donna Strait was sent home today um, with some health, you know, health issues related oh. to just more flu, migraine kind of things. But she feels bad about not being here tonight. But we can make a choice. Um, Julie and Margaret, who are also on the committee, can pitch it, or we can <laughs> just, just delay it until Donna comes, and then the three of them can do it. So when we get to that point, you can determine which way you want to go. Yeah. But the ladies will take one for the team if that's necessary. <laughs> so um, as we talked about um, doing, you know, at least monthly, right, to keep everybody informed about the things we're talking about, and um, tomorrow's Friday, so we have our 1 o'clock you know, a uh, meeting that's scheduled. Um, uh, sometimes Joan attends, you know, sometimes Julie attends. You know, it just really depends on what we're talking about. Mm. Um, this was a lot. Th this I was, was like, a lot. Oh, well, my I, I, I wrote, I wanted to write it for you so that you could see you think it was um, a lot? more specifically. It was, yes. Yes. Like, you know, was th this, and, and I have to just tell you, this is just a few so of the be. decisions yeah, that, sure. that need to get made. Wow. And as you can see, the complexity of them, you, you know, in order to make these decisions, you have to meet with people, you have to. You know, you have to do your do your homework. You have to consider, you know, contractual um, situations. There's just there's a lot to it, mm -hmm. and obviously our biggest priority right now is really trying to nail down the staffing because we, obviously we're trying to work it into the budget, but we also you know understand the anxiety any staff might be feeling about gee, am I going? Am I staying? You know, how, who's yeah, all of that whole seniority thing. I mean, it's not just as simple as you see here. That's why I took the time to write it so you could see the the, the level of thought that has to go into into these things. Um, but you know, I was also thinking that you know I, I should figure out a way to sort of uh, post some of this stuff so that people in the public can can sort of follow it. You know, here you know here are the decisions that are that are being made. I, I might be able to do that through the blog. I, I just have to think think about that because you know obviously I want the committee to be infor involved informed but it, it's there's no secrets to, to what we're doing right. 
um, and the discussions that we're having. So um, we can, Margaret and I can answer any questions that you might have that no. isn't clear here, but you know, we have been talking, a lot of people have been asking about the sixth grade configuration, how, how, what's that model going to look like? So I gave you some details on that. Um, we have upcoming, some of these things are driven by deadlines that are coming up. So in case, in terms of the preschool, we have a preschool parent meeting coming up. So we need Did to you know be, about? that's Did just next that? week. Yes. <laughs> yeah, which means, which is why we, which is why <laughs> we exciting. have to, you know, uh, have things, you know, decided so we know what we're presenting to the parents. Um, so, you know, that the preschool um, is definitely something that we're working on. Um, picking up and dropping off, lots of people have, it, I think the parent survey indicated mm -hmm. that people in both schools had yeah. questions about how that all was going to be handled logistically. Um, so I've written to you a little bit about, you know, how we're engaging the safety committee and Margaret's engaging her school council and we're actually going to go out and drive it and try to look at the different scenarios that, that might work. Um, obviously staffing um, is, a, is a big one. Uh, traditions and celebrations, people want to know, you know, sort of what are you doing going forward and so there's actually committees of people working on that that will um, uh, report on where that's going and the quilts, it was sort of sad, you know, Camille's quilt's down, you know, I call it Camille's quilt, but the, the, the quilt yeah. that was there, it, it's not there now um, and, uh, you know, so these kind of things are going to start to happen you know, where people are going to sort of have some anxiety around, okay, this is really happening, the change is happening. Mm -hmm. But the quilts, um, we have decided that two of, we picked two of the pearly quilts, and Margaret put something out to her faculty, you know, having at both, them. At both schools. At both schools. At Pembroke, um, teachers came back and children to the quilts down yeah. and wanted to prepare them. Yeah. That yeah. when you come back, they're, they're down. But don't worry, they're just being clean, they're going to be put up. And then at Pearly to prepare that we were going to take a couple down and to start that process of, you know, which which mm -hmm. ones are going to go. But mm -hmm. kind of that symbolic mm -hmm. joining. But were Margaret, you, were you but in Margaret that class? gave. My mom helped make. Oh, uh, she, well, they're the going to go to oh, the yeah. new school, so your mom can be happy about that. <laughs> but um, but I think you know the way Margaret help, the way Margaret handled that was really important mm -hmm. because she she actually gave them the opportunity to determine whether or not those quilts the people felt strongly that a couple of quilts should go. You know, not just we're moving the quilts. Which ones do you want? You know, so it, there is a it is a little delicate, right? You have to handle it in a delicate way. And you know, we want people to feel like you know they're leaving pearly, and that we're going to celebrate that, and what what all those wonderful memories are about that school, and and look forward to you know what can we look forward to going forward? And it, it does take time. You know, it, it is a big mm -hmm. move. But we also have to keep the decor of the pearly, you know, mm -hmm. fun and meaningful. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. So that's why we that important piece of we're not taking all of them but we're taking some so it is the symbolism of the joining but then it was then which ones go like how do you how do you even choose that yeah so you know it's but we've chosen a couple so they'll be they're being cleaned and then they're going to be fireproofed right. so we want to make because people had raised some concerns about the fireproofing and so we we have we alerted the company to the concern about that um and the i already know where the you know where they're going to be hung in the cafeteria but that's another thing we've been talking about like where would we want where would be the best place to represent you know the the quilts pearly, where the where quilts. where would those quilts be best so they're they don't they're not just pearly pembroke it's you know the new school mm -hmm. that you know things are emerged and then i want to even add to this because since mm -hmm. the press i mean things are happening all the time um yesterday morning we met with school council and started talking about the handbook because that is another big project that's, that's going to have to get taken care of because of course we are taking three handbooks and putting them into one so Barry Belanger had the middle school handbook up on the smart board and then we had our Pearly Penbrook handbook kind of you know in front of us and we started with the discipline so our entire session was really looking at discipline in the middle school and you know kindergarten through grade five and and how we what what do we want so you know th because that will come before you in the fall but that is a lot to go through just the management um you know we had talked about through the years 
things get added into the handbook so that before you know it, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. You know, you go to look for something and you really don't even know where to look. So we want to clean that up, um, just kind of move all the laws and um, the state, you know, the state and, and federal laws, put them into the appendix so that just the body of it is just pretty clean. So, um, you know, so that work will continue throughout the spring as well. So I, I really have a question about this. You do, or you? I do have yeah. a question just about the sixth grade. So, yep. you're going. You have five content teachers, but there's six rooms up there on That's that correct. third floor, right? That are right. designated That's sixth correct. grade rooms. And so the, all the sixth grade students, throughout the day, will be divided among those rooms, except for when they're with their specialist or art lunch. or music right. or. Right. In which right. case they'll be in a, the, a designated art room right. or music room or in the library. Right. Computers will be where for them well there's two there will be a computer lab um, in the library and then there will also be carts so that carts could go to the room but for you know they would leave the class for their technology time uh -huh. and we would expect that probably in the technology lab on the so, near the so library. I'm just envisioning a lot of commotion every 45 minutes on that third floor because students tr go to their locker to get their book or their homework for their next class. They don't necessarily do that. They usually carry their backpack along with them like they do. I mean, that that's a piece of what we need to help children learn to do because when they go, obviously, into seventh grade, middle school, that's, that's what, what they're going to be happens. doing. Absolutely. So, but if in the, in the, at the Pembroke, there are going to be fifth graders in that hallway who yeah, are going. And fifth grade is, we're talking, they will be doing some switching also. That we are not as final on how that will look, but start in fifth grade, maybe you switch for one, then by the time you get to sixth grade, okay, you are going to switch around. I'm just, I'm just more thinking of the noise and distraction that is the, the potential for that that could be on that third floor. I think the fifth grade and the sixth grade are, are those are long hallways. They're, they're, remember, there's that area in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I don't, I think the sixth grade is going to be pretty much on um, one end of the I, building. So I, that's a, okay, I yeah. envisioned like fifth grade on one side, sixth grade on the other, but no. you were talking about. Right. Fifth, okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes and, sense. And again, as you say, the rooms are, so you might be walking 10 feet. Right. I understand, so, but I was know, more, I mean, to me, middle school was yeah. all about the locker, going to your locker every chance you get, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like class avoidance. I don't avoidance. have to carry my books anymore. I can <laughs> right. put them all in the locker, right? Right. So. Yeah. So that seems to me that just yeah. I was trying to envision like how do you have fifth grade classrooms that are staying stable and every forty five minutes they're hearing right commotion in the hallway it seems like a yeah. potential for mm -hmm. you know and and again much you have to kind of live your life it. to know yeah, how to, to what to yeah. do so it, we can have the best laid plans and then the first day whoa yeah that didn't work <laughs> but I. So I think we have to base it on what we what we envision for the you know the education piece, and then the you know the actual the way we're we're doing it. Those, those are what we have children do. You know when when you're leaving, here's what you're going to do. That's the routine that children get into. So I think we have to make that decision on what what we envision, and then we play it out. You know, if it doesn't work, we try something else. But with the end goal that we are preparing them for that seventh grade. Sure, of course. Sure. And you said you plan you're going to go back to changing classes for fifth grade as well. Probably because again, I in had sixth that in fifth grade. So I was gonna right. Say. right. I, I yeah. remember fifth grade being that kids would change class they for a science and a math mm -hmm. class. Yeah. We're talking right. about the teaming structure. Another classroom yeah. which right. would be more English. And yes. Social yeah. studies and to prepare them for that sixth yes. grade when now they're it's a pretty much changing. Progression of change. Right. Right. Yeah. right. You know, one of the things that I think we hear often in, you know, over the years is the, the, the concerns about transitions. Mm -hmm. How do we prepare kids, whether it's going to a new school, to a new grade, you know, is there, is there a sort of a logical progression? And I think we've kind of come to the conclusion that we could do that better. And this is an opportunity, having a new school, new grade spans, it, it is a good opportunity to, to look at it again. and. You get to create the, you know, a, a situation that we might think is better than what we've done. Now, now we'll, we'll ha we feel we'll have a better transition from six to seven. Yeah. 
you know, whereas that's always been a challenge, that fifth to sixth grade year. And we won't have to make the first to second grade because right. that's, right. you know, now once kids enter the school, they're, they're, they're part of that school community now until they leave sixth grade. I think that progression will be awesome as well because I know I'm in peer leaders and we usually, for the past few years, we've gone to Pembroke to talk to the fifth graders about moving up to sixth grade and what the difference is. And they're always like, do we see high schoolers all the time? They're like, oh, no. They get like, nervous, yeah. You, like, you sink into it. But like uh, this year we don't have to come up because it's a little different for next year. But um, just thinking about the difference, the small progressions for each year, I think that will be a lot more helpful because I know fifth grade for me was different because I did switch classes. So going mm -hmm. to sixth grade was nothing. Yeah. But for the year after me, that's when they stopped. So that mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. if that was different for them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just curious also, you say grouping for math is still being discussed, and what's the, what are some of the issues that play into that? Well, it's, it's grouping for math is, it's, that's one of those concepts that on paper that looks good, okay? You know, here's where you are in math, so, you know, children that are similar, this homogeneous group, there you go. But, but when you do that, now you have impacted your entire day. Because those children, in essence, have to move together wherever they go. Because it's very difficult to take those 20 children and then for, for one hour, then where do you go next? So, the, so, so. Because then, then it's, it's in, in essence, you are, you are saying that group is staying together. And just, just personally, my, you know, my philosophical, um, view is that in research supports that you that heterogeneous groups of kids are how they how you learn best yeah. you it does research doesn't show that a homogeneous group is how you want to have your class so you know for me th that is two big reasons why we want to think about that you know I understand that um, you know that there are challenges to that but when we're looking at the impact it really does have on the rest of the day it's it just to me it's a very difficult yeah. You know, so, thing so to the have kids. Happen. So I'm just getting this sinking in. So the kids will be, their move as a group from teacher to teacher, but the group of students will stay consistent in sixth grade. That's Probably. not necessarily how it is in seventh grade. Exactly, right? and that's and I so think that's, that's the, the transition in, in yeah. middle and high school yeah. where you you are choosing. You know, like your, there's your class, but. So Again, you know, it is that concept in where each class. That's a big it's still deal. an elementary, that's a big so deal, yeah. huge, right? That's a huge deal. For them. But I, yeah. so I think that will prepare children for that move. And so, why would that even be? Why is it even a topic of discussion? Then? Because currently, in the last several years, it you know it's been um, raised by a number of parents um, that they're they have had concerns that um, students have been you know, that the top students haven't been challenged or that the special education students haven't got enough support. So um, the way it was set up is that based on a set of criteria that was public to everyone, um, students were sorted into, you know, a high math group, a middle math group, a low math group. But as Margaret's saying, what then happens sometimes, unless you can figure out a way to sort of throw everybody back into the pot for the other subjects, you end up with your top kids sort of following each other and your, your lower kids following each other and your kids in the middle. So, or you know. When, and, you know, you may learn a particular way in math, but not in a particular other area. So now, you know, and again, what, what does that really say or do for your, your class and, you know, um, the teaching and learning. I, I just think it, it really limits and, and really does say, okay, here's the kind of learner you are, and then there's no, no way to ever sure. change that. Sure, sure. And, and the, the goal, because the, you know, the teachers will be teaching their subject, is that they will be well trained in how to differentiate in that, in that way. So, you know, if you're in an English class and you're reading novels, you know, there are ways to s both challenge and support, you know, the, the students in the class. Um, and because you're teaching one subject, it's easier than what the elementary teacher deals with, which is sure. four, four or five different subjects sure. over the course yeah. of the whole day. Um, so the goal would, the, the, I don't want anybody to, to hear the message that, oh, if we didn't do grouping in math, that means that somehow 
you know, we think everybody's average and that there isn't an, an expectation that the top kids would still be challenged um, by the by the teacher, by the math teacher. No, I think it actually got, I, that, I like that's, the heterogeneous grouping and I like the idea that, that the kids will learn math from a math teacher mm -hmm. who's only, because I think that teacher will have a lot more time to reflect on that's how do it. I meet everybody's needs as opposed that's to it. a teacher who's teaching multiple subjects. Right, it's difficult as, yeah. you know, because the standards do, obviously they, they get deeper and wider the older sure. you get you know there's just more to it so it, it is very difficult although I will say you know having said that there the research that I've read there is no one way to do it because yeah. for right. as some schools do it that way and yet other sixth grade schools have chosen to remain a model where you are a self-contained class that still at that age the relationship between the child and the teacher is the most important determination so that impacts so you know what I've read is there is not one way to do it. it you will find schools that do it both ways because there's no clear one way that yeah. arises above so, the others being right. clearly better yeah it's such right. a difficult time I think development is so uneven that's why it, they're just not very young at that sixth right. grade and some yeah. very old sixth graders right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so but you know because the standards are where they are and we do want right. to I, you know, we've just chosen to start this way, right? Um, you know, and this is what we're going to. How much to do. Um, choice is there? Is this when the students leave sixth grade for subjects like, say, math and English when they go to seventh grade? How much? How much choice is there in what they can choose to take? Peter yeah. and Julie. <laughs> um, seven, it's not my under, It's my understanding that they teach that they have seventh grade English seventh grade math which in, involves the standards that relate to okay. what the curriculum is, needs to include you i mean it's not till high school right. that it's you like start like to differentiate biology right. versus physics versus right is, is that right that middle school okay. is, is pretty school has a standard curriculum there's standards. certainly vocabulary programs that we've purchased okay. that you know people I'm do there's certain yeah. novels that they do in seventh graders there's certain, i mean like like in science But, but would people but have a choice? All like she's grade. asking about like choice. When you go to seventh grade, can you choose between seventh grade biology or seventh grade life science? Mm -hmm. Or seventh grade, you know, English literature or seventh grade, you know, writing or something? It's all the same. Mm -hmm. Each of the in classes. Middle school. In middle and school. high school is where you start to see okay. much more of that differentiation. Yeah, okay. Can we talk a little bit about number six, which is the, teach, the teachers? Because I know yes. a, a lot of parents have had misconceptions about yeah. that and can you just touch base on the teachers that's the, that the, teachers. Are the, the certification correct well again it's um it is the state certifies you to teach a particular thing so you can get certified in a pre-k through grade two so then that's what you can teach you can't be hired you know to teach a grade four so in middle school you can be you can be elementary certified which is one through six or content certified so if you're content certified you can't teach in you, you can't teach in elementary so you need an elementary certification now that we're moving to a you know K to 6 that's the elementary model so yeah you can't have a 5 to 8 right because so there oh, five, yeah the middle schools are all well I shouldn't say all there are five to nines and there are five to eights depending on the subject Certain, area no, but you're talking about schools not certification no no I'm talking about certification oh, certifications. <laughs> okay right so if you have a content certification you, you they're can't. not going to be right because we're we're an elementary model of one if you have six. a five to eight certification <laughs> can you teach at the new Pembroke Yes. Well, you, yeah. you could. I don't know that there are. I mean, I okay. think that's the. Yeah. That it, I don't yeah. know. If there well, are that. Well, that. Th this is this is the complication of this, right? So if you look at somebody, um, like, well, I explain that to you here. Right. So you have of the two teachers we know are coming, one holds an elementary certification. Right. But teaches right now at the middle school a single subject. I mean, he has a, a, another assignment um, for one period, you know. But generally speaking, he teaches one subject. Um, then you have another teacher who's content certified in in a subject, um, five to eight. So, okay. 
he'd be teaching that subject at the sixth grade level. Mm -hmm. So either will work, um, but right now, th those are the two we know are coming. Um, there are some others that, you know, are still uh, new, very new teachers, which, you know, the year is not over. We're, we're not positive if any, any of those people are going to come to the new Pembroke at this point in time. So it could be that the, that the people that are existing there move, but it also could be the case that Margaret would be hiring brand new language arts teachers, um, a science teacher, and we do know of a retirement for special education, so we do know that Margaret needs to hire uh, a special education teacher for sixth grade. Um, but that's why it's tricky, right? So, so at what point does that, is that all determined? I mean, um, well, uh, principals usually make decisions about um, whether or not they're going to invite um, teachers who don't have professional status back generally in the spring, so early spring. By April? Yeah, no, later than April, but you know, between February and March, they may have those conversations with people. Um, so, you know, we know what subjects we're offering and we know where, where we need to place teachers. We just don't know who those teachers are going to be at this moment. So, in other words, we have teachers at the middle school now who mm -hmm. don't have professional status. Correct. And so they can't, they, they have essentially no job security at this point? Correct. You don't have job security, honestly, till your first day of your fourth consecutive year, okay. according to the state and actually according to our, the way our contract works. And are, have, at, have you found out, are those teachers interested in coming to that? We haven't that um, pursued, you know, that I think Peter may have by? been having some of that no, conversation. In, in coming to the Pembroke as opposed to staying at the middle high school. Yeah, I, I think those are administrative <laughs> decisions, you know, it, it, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think the administrators probably having conversations with people if they're people they want to invite back. I, we just, you know, those are all personnel discussions that, okay. you know, are ongoing okay. that we, that that makes sense, we right? Just you don't need know. to know if you're going to want those people at your school. Well, you just well, or or They're if they if they would be a good match, yeah. right? You you know, some people really want to teach at a middle school and really aren't interested in teaching at an elementary right. school. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of balls in the air around that. That's why it's tricky. But I think the reason we wanted to bring forward the discussion was is really really more about you know here's what we think we're going to do for the model because that was a big question and I think the issue that Barbie's bringing up that I have heard is you know oh they're just going to bring all these middle school teachers and they're not going to be certified and and that is not going to be the case as I point out here it, it is a process that you have to be very careful about um, and you know we we know um, you know two people that are you know, interested, and we, we're actually inviting them to in services and things that we're starting to do now. Can you um, ask how long these two teachers have been with the district? Um, uh, oh boy, one for 15. one, I'm one sorry. for at least fifteen years, and the other I'm gonna say. It's recent, Mr. Chanel. Yeah, I'm gonna say five or six. Five. 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 Yeah. Five. But they're both they're both staff. interested in coming. That's to our understanding. Yep. Yeah. Because even last. September, so two years ago, well, a year and a half ago, I went to the middle school to meet with the team so that, you know, to talk about, to start thinking about where you want to be. You know, it is because it's both. It's where, you know, an administrative decision about where teachers are, mm -hmm. but, you know, we don't want people to be kicking and screaming. Sure. You know, that's just <laughs> not going to work. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's you know, to start thinking about literally when you're in the hall, do you want to see this right. <laughs> or do you want to see this? Right. So because it's a completely right. it's, different yeah. culture. It's, it's just yeah, very, absolutely. very different. And so, the school rituals are going to be right. different. They're going to mm -hmm. feel very the, different. The, their time yeah. schedules are different. Yeah, everything. The different. amount of teaching time directly their, with their, students is different. The interactions they'll have with everything parents. Everything will be different. Everything right. will be different. Except the child. I mean, a sick, the child's the child, <laughs> but <laughs> it's the environment that absolutely. really also yeah, but is the, going to a shape. A teacher's environment, I mean, your work environment is, is important. important. It is. Yes. So. I do hate to see, I love the fact that those two individuals are going because yeah. I think they display professionalism, leadership. Yeah. I think they're going to be great over very, there. Very I happy. hate to see them leave because I also oh, think they're great with this. With middle school kids. Mm -hmm. And yeah. not even that they teach like the eighth graders, but they're still so good with them. Yeah, like exactly. They remember them from really having them. So. Diversity numbers. Sorry? Your diversity numbers that right, we were talking right. about. Right, right. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
if one and I and I'm confident there's not an easy answer, but if, if someone is <laughs> is certified elementary or or the other, if one wants to get the other certification, mm -hmm. realistically, how long would that take? Not long. They have to take the teacher test. They have to take. Well, first of all, they have. Yep, they have to have a certain amount of credits, credits in the in in their the subject, field in the right. subject. Um, but they can. Most people can get a inter, you know a provisional right. certification, initial certification. I think is what they call it, by by passing the teacher content test. So that it's okay. So it is. It is as easy as that as that if yeah. these are the right people and they wanted to make the Correct. transition. Right. So it's Correct. not okay. We're not just. No, 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 Close no, the door. no, no, every, every, yeah. the people that we're talking about all, you know, know, yep. know all those things and this is their, this is their choice. Yeah, a year that and it a half, easy that's answer. a great amount of time. That's an easy answer. Yeah. Right. A year and a half ago, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. you put it, put the button in the air. Well, because that's happen. why, if you're going to take a test, you've got to, you know, yeah. maybe you, maybe you're going to have to study for the test. You have to sign up. You have to think about where I want to be. Then you have right. to go through the process. So, mm -hmm. and we see how time it doesn't seem like <laughs> but oh, goes you know, fast. Two years. Here we are. <laughs> right. I mean, we, I, yeah. you know, joke all the time. The year is almost over. Right. It's not, but just it goes that fast that here we are, January. Before you know it, we're going to be in February vacation. So you know, these are things that we just really we've had to plan pretty much in advance, get people thinking about it. So definitely. Okay, and then number eight about music. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, I know, I know, I knew this. But we had talked about this mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just the difficulty with the right. yep. scheduling of that. And and this is another, this is another, um, like the homogeneous group. Yep. That if you put band in the middle of the day, like a a subject. Yep. Then, where do those kids go? You by having them take a band, you've you've assigned their day because they can't there's no you know again there's there's not the choice and so and in again in elementary school the specials are that provides the grade level time so you have to have a place for everybody to go so mm -hmm. making that in the middle of the day just it 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 um, that drives every other decision and I, I just you know, I, I don't want that to be the driver. That's an important piece, but that, to me, it, that can't drive every other educational decision. Of the well, day. as I pointed out, the, the right now the current middle school has two. They have, yeah, they have two specials. Mm -hmm. So it, I think one of the challenges that people have felt in the past, because, I mean, I've lived through the days when individual um, providers would come in, like the, the clarinet lady would come in to do clarinet lessons, and kids would be pulled out of class to go to the clarinet lessons on the day the clarinet lady was there, but a teacher never had a full class of kids because the clarinets were out for this particular time and then the flutes were out and then, the, you know, and while I think that's very nice for the children and very nice for the families because they knew the, pro the, the, the and, and for the band director, because they knew lessons were being provided, it was really tough on the classroom teachers because kids were being yanked out and if they were trying to do classroom activities or pull groups together, whatever. So, um, and the same thing happened with the band, is that some students and families were concerned because they didn't want their child to never have phys ed. Right. They didn't want their child never to engage in art or PE um, or any other subject. Because what, what happens now at the middle school, if you choose band, right, you have band for one of your specials and you, own, you have to have gym because it's a requirement but you don't get the benefit of all the other specials. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the data that, you know, it, you can look at data any way you want, but when I look at the data and I see the drop in the percentage of kids that go from fifth to sixth in the band, when I probe that with people, I often hear my child doesn't want to miss out on technology uh, and every other art, thing, yeah. art. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is a challenge, yeah. there's no doubt. And in, in the, with the elementary situation, it's one period. It's not two. So if we were to say, you can choose your special and, and band, we have one problem we have is we only have the same guy teaches the music, teaches the band and the music, right? right? So scheduling is a little bit of a challenge. But also it would mean that those kids would have band. They, they wouldn't have the availability of all the, schedule, of all the other subjects. So that's, that's been the challenge. We, we don't think, we don't really have a great answer for this. You know, we're just trying to weigh 
you know, it, it it can't be the same as the middle school because the day isn't set up the same way right. for one for one thing, right. and it's not. It's there's a distinct the music and a distinct is music band. Still one of their special. Yes. 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 And so. Yes. So what does the sixth grade music curriculum look like? It's it's gen we're gonna discuss that, but it's generally going to be um, we have a, a vocal vocal music the program that's integrated and usually there's um, experience with ORF instruments and movement and, and some of those kind of things. So there is a using instruments, but it's not a band. It's the standards situation. that they're teaching the music standards. Right. So yeah, and yeah. right, band is band, but then music right. And right, and the, and at the middle high school, you have distinct staff for band and distinct staff for choral. Oh, this see. is the same I person the same for both. Person for both. So, you know, I mean, we're, the door's not closed in terms of talking about how we can make sure maybe we can provide some time, but I think it would probably be, you know, leading people down the wrong path to think that we're thinking that it's every day like it currently is. I, I don't think that's where we're leaning right now. I just don't. But there I would still be an after-school band program for the sixth Well, that's grade. what, you know, so then band, you know, could continue in a similar model, right. either before or after school. See, what happens right now, like, for example, in, um, like, they're planning for a holiday concert or something, the music teacher will be, you know, the teachers are gracious enough to say, okay, you know, you can have the kids during this block. Um, you know, there may be opportunities to do something like that. Right. right, where, you know, periodically or how many ever times a year it needs to happen, that, you know, everybody will, um, but when you look at a, an elementary day and you're trying to put four blocks yeah. plus a special plus an intervention, and, and you want there to be at the beginning and the end of the day sort of a home room to do morning meeting and close up the day, you know, s s something has to give if you sure. do that. And, sure. and I'm not saying that it, there isn't some way to make that happen for some period of time. I just don't think we see how it can happen in the same way it currently happens at the middle school now. Does band still meet in the, in the afternoon? Like yes. After, yeah, after school? Doing, yeah. Because there will be a, another concert in the spring. Yeah, there's one in April, right? No, it's so like after school, like a, there's a set day? Yeah. Like yes, till it, yeah. three, four. And don't years. some kids or come in, in certain and days the, for different kinds of yeah, instrument. instruments? Yeah, instruments. You know, I think, I, morning, they come I in think the yeah. Instruments. Oh, yeah. And and there was a time when um, we, the, two music directors ago, when um, the way Peter scheduled it is that the first period of every day, the band director went and taught a class for the for the Pembroke kids even before school, I think he even did it. It was when Dave was here, Peter. You, you remember you yeah, gave him? Before we, we were rotating. Though. Right, before they were rotating. So he could say, okay, you know, you're free this period, and he would go over to Pembroke, to Pembroke and he would run the band. But I still think that was before the Pembroke day. I don't, still don't think that came out of. Yeah, yeah, because obviously the high school right. teacher schedule starts earlier, yeah. earlier yeah. than the. Between 7.30 and 8.15, mm -hmm. so. There you go. So that would have been before the kids came. So it's, it isn't easy. I know. But it's one of those sort of changes that, you know, we're going to have to feel our way through that. Um, and, and the music teachers do want to meet with us. So, you know, we definitely, you know, everybody gets an audience, you know, everybody can make their case. And, you know, if we can figure out ways to, you know, accommodate, you know, because we, we want opportunities sure. for kids. Sure. We just we just know that there's not much about the same way the middle school operates now that's necessarily going to result in how we're going to do it in sixth grade because sure. the, the yeah. environment is very different. So that's why we want to pair, prepare people for the change. Absolutely. Other questions? Can I ask a question on, on the preschool one? Yes. Um, obviously because it relates to me, but also sort of a, from a, someone from my perspective, other than knowing that I could email one of the two of you, I would have had no idea that there was a meeting on January 15th. Somebody else mentioned that. Um, and it is, oh, it's a little date on our website. Okay. And it does go in the Georgetown record. Okay. So it's been in the newspaper. Okay. But um, that is the conversation. It, and we send it out to area preschools. Mm -hmm. But if you don't read the paper, and if you I, don't go to one of the preschools, right. you'd have to go to our website and you'd have to see, you know, the little date on the side. Right. So, so what's a, what's a way to deal with that, Margaret? I'm wondering. Well, like, that that is, I guess, the 
I don't know. I, I really don't know because that you, sign. How, how, how would you sign? How would you expect well, to find out about it? Like, uh, to be honest, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It was just one of those things where you said, "Oh, I'm glad you emailed me. It's January 15th. Right. and I thought, right. "Well, I'm glad I happened to email you." Right. Whatever day. Well, it was. I think that is. I think that is important though because it is. that it that is. night well, there's a lottery. So mm -hmm. if we don't. No, no, there's not a lottery. That oh, night. So oh, that's the information March. session. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we need to know what people are interested. Right. You know. But I will. I will say that is every year what I I say. How do people know? <laughs> like everyone <laughs> seems to. Out. Okay. Everyone does because we'll you know we'll have a full house, but. Yeah, if you don't read the paper and if you're not in one of the preschools that we right. send the information out to, and again, you could go to our website and look, but if many, you don't know many parents. Don't know, sending yeah. it to local pediatricians' offices is also useful. Yeah, that, I mean, everybody takes yeah. their kids. I wonder if we them. would know from the census who had children of that age. I wonder if the town would know who had children for, of that age. Because obviously, if you've gone through it, I just Many parents, my and, they, yeah. you know, they they don't they say, "Do I have to come?" <laughs> but if you have a firstborn, that is that's that population that we I do think more about that. So. Maybe the town would allow us to, you know, maybe they could make that the list um, right. available. We could send so just could send just a letter it. in yeah. the general mail that saying, "Don't know if you're planning, but right. you right. know, if you're if you're interested, and, you know, have a." Three-year-old. There's like there, there's the moms group and there. Yeah, yeah. Like there, there are those sorts of things. There's a Facebook page. I just, oh, I guess, in part, yeah, I sort yeah, of think, uh, especially if we're trying to throw it, page, yes. yeah. we'll put just it kind on, of a, and we can put it everywhere it. and. Yeah. Don't right. we can tweet it. We can tweet it. Too far ahead. Is that what you say? Tweet it. So, but yeah. it is scheduled to go up actually tomorrow. Okay. There you go. So, <laughs> so Pam's got it set. Right. That's good. So we can at least Facebook it because I mean I I I'm right there with you. So how do we do this? How do we get it to people if they're not there? How do we get might be able to put together a flyer and then put it at like Crosby's. I mean, there's a few places that people go that they do allow right. you to CVS, you know, just to library. the library. Oh, the library. Yeah, yeah, we do. We send it to libraries. Send it to so might, those are a couple it. things we might want to try yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. Just a thought. That's no, that's yeah. a, no, that's, and a, that's a great very point. Good yeah. Very good thoughts. Very good thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Lots to think about. <laughs> But you know, if you, you know if you have opinions of any of these things, you know, just yeah. drop us a note, um, and we'll just keep informing you. There are um, also questions. Um, and any because, questions, right? You know, you hear them from the public. Are, you know, extended yeah. day are things that we're going to have to be talking about. So if you have a question of, oh, what's going to happen with such and such, email yeah. us. You know, make sure that it's well, on so our. So here's radar. just what comes to mind. I know, like, okay, my fourth grader is going to get her end of year report card, and she's going to be looking for who do I have next year? Mm -hmm. What's her report card going to say? And is she going to know ahead of time that when she goes to fifth grade, she'll be switching teachers? She'll have the English and. Yeah, when those decisions are made, we would certainly yeah, inform the kids the right. and the, yeah, and, right. the and the yeah. parents. Yeah, right. Because I know that's such a big deal in yeah. Georgetown right. that yeah. last day of school and oh yeah, it is opening yes. your report card and seeing who your teacher is going <laughs> right. to be in. Who's well, that was pretty. That's recent too because I had kids that didn't didn't we didn't know. Yeah. You used Until to wait. The first day. Yeah. They used right. to post the list the on the first day. First no. day. Or didn't they used or to post like the like list three days like, yeah. before yeah. Three days on the before. school, so people were coming up to the school yeah. to see the list. Yeah, we, yeah, I mean, yeah. we may have to just because on a report card, you know, it's easy to write one name, but when you've got to do complicated things like you know, all different yeah. subjects, it just may be well. If well, it's, it's sixth grade and everyone's, you wouldn't have fifth to, grade. You're talking fifth grade. Right in fifth grade. Yeah. If Maybe you just put who their English teacher is. They're their homeroom teacher, or so to Their home, you know, their yeah. main teacher. Yeah. So we'll have to we'll talk think about, about that. Yeah. yeah, we'll think about that for sure. Then the, I think mostly they want to know who's in their class, not so much. Right. I mean, they want to know the teacher, <laughs> but they want to know who their peer group right. is. Oh, I know. Is their best friend in their class with them, right. and yeah. there's a whole. A whole lot of letting go of your best friend when you find oh, out. Oh, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It, it's I will hard. just say your about that. Next year here, here's my plea to, to everybody. Here's my plea. <laughs> Let's hear it, it. Well, it is a reminder that at the end of the year, when sometime, and it's not very often, but when sometimes people are upset, oh, you know, they're not with a friend, I, you know, sometimes I do have to remind them that when the year started, they, they, start, they were, they felt that way from the year before. Yeah. Then the year starts and they get to know everyone. So there's an element of, you know, we do try to pair, but sometimes for whatever reasons, they're not in with their best friend. And to, you know, to say, give it, give it a couple weeks. You will start bonding with this group of people 
these kids, and then at the end you're going to be well, like, I don't want to leave them. Well, also make an effort to find out who their child is in and schedule play dates over the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, when when you know yeah. that you have it, your child is yeah. going. That's been my experience mm -hmm. when your child is going to be faced with a new peer group. I've been really pleased with how parents have reached out to each other and right. said, "Could we?" You know, August will start in a week, and our kids are going to be in the same class. Right. Let's do you want to get together? And, right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that. But we stuff. do try. You know, we I ask for parent input. I want to know those things. You know, who and not even a best friend, but who are good learning buddies. Yeah. You know, who works well with the child because we do try to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. so. But you have to do that with balancing everything sure, too. You know. Right. So could I just go back yep. to the preschool for a yeah. question? Yep. Um, it says, let's see, so all sessions will be full day sessions, but the co-taught class would be set up that if parents wanted a half day program, it is available in this class. Yep. Right. Um, so d would that be a, at a, a lower rate? Uh, um, no. I mean, would that, that be a because, flexible? Well, because the way How the, way the sessions are now, there are three full day sessions and then there's a half day morning but when we have looked in the past so then a couple things um and when we have the lottery we you know we put up the certain number of spots you come for the lottery then you fill them up and then we start a wait list and it's always been my goal to not have a big wait list if you have a big wait list open another session you right. know just do it again so you get people in but what we found is that parents don't really want an afternoon session. That did not work well. It was it just didn't work well. You know, littles are they're still napping, so parents didn't want that. Right. Um, if they're older, they want full day because they're preparing for kindergarten. So the ha afternoon session just didn't really work. So what we talked about was all right. What we'll do is we'll make that a full day slot. <coughs> But if you do want to come for half day, you can take a half day. And then, so in essence, it's just kind of <coughs> letting it fill up, you know, however it wants to. So you would always have the option as a parent to make that day a full day or not. Right. And then that would be the class that would be kind of the co-taught model. Okay. Because that class would also be um, the director might be you know at halftime director halftime teacher right. so therefore you know if you you'd be able to maybe step out in the afternoon to do your administrative work but now meanwhile there is still a teacher who's going to be in that class so you're you're together children know families know the two but the director can get that work done and still teach got it okay thank you you're welcome we were pretty proud of that one yeah that was, <laughs> thought that one was creative. we thought we really were pretty creative there didn't we Margaret <laughs> right sounds good <laughs> anything else on this matter a lot to think about a lot yeah, there's yeah. so many pieces right. so we're skipping over Mike again yep. let's skip over Mike it's no problem and what do you want to do about the RTI I would I would prefer to wait I don't know what the rest of the committee would like to do. We'll it's fine. Don't mind waiting. Okay. It's fine. Okay. You're off the hook, ladies. <laughs> we will reschedule. Thank you, though, for being yes. able to offer. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. For being offered up. Okay. Um, so we can go right down to the financial report. We have an invoice for approval. Yeah, we must have an invoice for approval. I didn't even notice one. I didn't know. Oh. Where is there one in? You know what I did see it. It was for like twenty two hundred. Yeah, this one. Yeah, twenty two minutes after right? that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. CBI Consulting oh, for the uh, for the school roof. Okay. Let me think about this for a minute. Oh, I think. Um, yeah, there's nothing in the notes. No, there's nothing in the notes. Um, but I think that this is just um, the way they, this is their proposal. 
fixed fee service. So, so this is total, what it's going to cost for for the total invoice amount is sixty eight four three. With this, oh, we had ninety one twenty four amount billed. We paid sixty eight forty three, which left the twenty two eighty one. Yes. I'm wondering why she didn't pay that because that was billed prior to the ninety one twenty four. Well, it, it may it may be on the warrant. Do you think I, that it, what she's saying is it hasn't? Yeah, it hasn't been. Statement of outstanding invoices. That's what I'm guessing is that it's just in the payment process. Yeah, I mean I'm sure it's a legitimate, line, so to speak, um, fee that we have to pay for the school replacement. I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like it looks like you would be approving the invoice for the 6843, right? For the total invoice amount. Because it looks like she's got the previous bill, you know, accounted for with the t the two two, eight one accounted for there. Okay, so the six eight forty three, including the twenty two eighty one. It sounds like it does. It, as you as I see it there, it looks like the amount right, of the original bills and then we paid the that, and that's what we still owe. No, it looks like it looks like ninety one twenty four was a billed, and then the twenty two eighty one was taken care of. And what's left to pay is 6843. That's how That's I read it. Because 2281 plus 6843 equals 9124. Yeah. Right. But why at the bottom would it say the statement of outstanding invoices 2281? I think it's just because like it hasn't cleared. Actually cleared. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But it's counted for in the in the at the top under previously built. Okay. Is that is that everyone's understanding? Sure. Um so the 6843. Right. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to Approved payment in the amount of six thousand eight hundred and forty-three dollars to CBI Consulting um, for the Pearly Elementary School roof replacement project. Um, invoice. I don't have an invoice. Oh, a, oh yeah, the invoice number two two. Do you want to read that one more time? Yeah, it's right there. Okay, two two. Okay, invoice number two two six nine eight, uh, dated 12 22 2014 as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't have the original. Um, none of us do. Joan okay. probably had the original. So. And then we just have um, some subcommittee reports. Has bu budget and finance met? We have a um, date schedule. Tamara Figueroa is working on a date. We are feverishly. <laughs> yes, we're trying <laughs> desperately to get a date. Actually, I think we were shooting for the end of next week, wasn't it? Um, Did, was that one of the dates? Because I I know I when I talked to Joan about yeah. you know having everything ready for that discussion, I thought she said. Well, I definitely at the end, you know, end of next week, I would have that ready. So that's what I remember from my conversation with Joan. So have you been sending out? Um, Laura just sent an email yesterday or today. Yeah. We're back at the trial. Oh, okay. okay. We will get, we will get. For the meeting. next two, I think. Even. So. Yeah, because that's important. Okay, governance. Uh, we have not met recently. Our next meeting is January 22nd. And we're considering concussion and discipline policies and something else. More on concussion. Didn't we work on concussion last well, year? Well, uh, <laughs> I have to. <laughs> no, really. It was a long. We, we did a lot on concussion. It was like a pages of it. I know. What are we now doing? I know. There's we now we have currently the JD something LC whatever policy. Yeah. MASC, the Massachusetts Association yeah. of School Committees, recommends the JJIF and JJIFR policies. Right. Okay. They're slightly different. There's some overlap and there's some non overlap. A lot of different um, districts around, <laughs> most of the districts that I saw have the JJIF, which we do not. Um, so, we're in the process of kind of looking at both of them and thinking which one is best for us. 
could we have both? Do we need both? Do we need just one? If we took one or the other, how how should we, um, you know, you update that, that or, or customize it to to our district's particular needs? Mm. So, and we were supposed to have a meeting tonight, but um, that just it didn't work mm -hmm. out. Okay, things got in the way. Okay. Well, so, I know you've been busy like, because every packet lot, we have, we have the, the new pol and we have new policies and updates, which is great. Mm -hmm. Right, um, but I just remember so the last I, year. It does seem going. like it's, it's gone like, on for a long time. I know what you mean, but you know what? We've also been working on the Health and Wellness Committee mm -hmm. all last year was working on an operational policy, a return to academics, which sounds like it's the same thing, but it's really not quite the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um. So it's just, you know, it's a continual, and I do think it's appropriate to have a continuing dialogue on, uh, you know, head injury and and how we we handle it as a district, both uh, from the athletic perspective and the academic perspective. Um, you know, students are content. Seventy, there's seventy-eight percent more concussions in high school sports than in college sports. Um, so it really I is just something wonder that we if, need if to keep the making numbers, sure that we're doing the best. If we've that we always can. had concussions, but we just weren't as uh, stringent on identifying them. Absolutely, right? I'm sure you're right about that. It I, just seems like that's. And, but really the now that we word. we know more, we yeah. need to do better with it sure. and just make sure that we're always watching to make sure that we're. we're we have the best safety procedures right. in place and yep. policies. So yes, we have been working on it in a long time, but we will continue to do so. Okay. The one for you. Thank you. So Negoti January twenty second. Okay. Thanks. Negotiating. Uh, we're meeting Wednesday, and then the following school committee meeting, we'll probably do an executive session yeah. to just give you an update. You yeah. know, I did um, email Mike uh, Farrell about like who was the um, representative. Yeah. And I didn't get an answer. I, I I'll try again. Yeah, I've um, talked to a couple of selectmen just when I've yeah. seen them, and uh, I, I've gotten different yeah. uh, reports. So that would be nice to know. Okay, I, I can I can because we try always that want again. them to know they're more than welcome. Oh, to absolutely, because yeah, they have a vote at the end. At the end of the day, they have a vote. Mm -hmm. They should anytime you have an update, they should yeah. get an update. Okay. Uh, public relations. Um, our next meeting is on January 28th, and we'll continue to work on the communication plan, mm -hmm. as well as some other as well items. as the maybe as well implementing, as what, the, implementing what Michael, you know, designed for us. So absolutely, we're very excited about that. The alternative to let's talk. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, safety. You had one. We met this morning. We had a very small group. <laughs> Apparently, um, it was too cold. Yeah, fire chief Kersley apparently had noon. Oh, and you calls. weren't there. I wasn't there, weren't but there. I know um, the um, Cindy. When I talked to her this morning at five o'clock, um, she said that two of her other districts had delayed two hours, so she um, was worried that she were, was going to yeah. have to. We weren't sure where she out. was. We figured also there was something about the weather that probably. I should have emailed Margaret about it, and I just That's forgot. All right. We we um, so Margaret will be in touch with her. There's an issue about the transportation van. Oh yeah, uh, at yeah. the Pembroke School that she thought was resolved, and she's continuing to work on that. Um, but we had a, a a lovely discussion this morning about um, the issue of dogs and dog walkers at the schools. Um, apparently, there's been a few incidents at the Pembroke where students who are playing have um, slipped in dog feces and become uh, covered, and had to have their uh, parents bring them clothes, and they've. They've, it's just been horrifying. So the stories she told were horrifying to me. I can't imagine what it's like for the students. So um, we discussed with the Chief Cudmore what some of the options are for enforcing a clean up after your dog. Um, I and, can't imagine and not cleaning up after your dog. It's very I mean, hard I to imagine and yet don't understand. So at this point what we have are signs going up at all the schools which will I encourage people to pick up after their pets and notify them that police take notice. And then we will find out um, Chief Cudmore is investigating what he can do once he right. has <laughs> evidence that somebody's not cleaning up after their animal. So, and those signs will <laughs> also be posted at the turf field because we have noticed people have observed um, dogs on the turf field. So. Mm. Um, there was, I guess, some good news, which is that the um, the culprits of the school vandalism mm -hmm. at the Pembroke have been identified, yep. and the police are working with everyone involved. 
They are not um, Georgetown residents. Um, they're looking towards some kind of a community service. Something will be involved to that end, but the chief couldn't tell us any more than that, other than that they've been identified and he's working on it. And mm -hmm. that Carol has been informed. Mm -hmm. So when they say that they've identified, so the, the culprits don't know they've been identified? No, I oh, think no, they, they know. Oh, okay, oh, they, they do. do. Okay, they've been notified that we <laughs> oh, know. Yes. That, yeah. okay. they, they know. They know. Okay. They know we know, and there's there's work being done. Okay. Um, Guy was wondering when the field would be available. He's concerned about kids hopping the fence to get onto the field, and also about there is an opening with access to the field that's near the brook. Apparently. See that? That's and yeah. So to the right. Yes. So that, remember, I said that I saw a, a, a big group of kids. That's how they were walking out. Because I said, "Oh, they're not jumping over." So anything. they were coming. They were coming out from the brook. So to the right, when you drive in to the right, that's how they were accessing the okay. field. Okay. Let me check at that. I haven't. Well, so, so there's concern the that somebody will eventually fall into the brook, and, yeah, and that that will be. So there's a, there's safety issues. Okay. And. Um, He's mm -hmm. also, so we're just wondering who's responsible for monitoring at the field at this point. So this whole issue with the insurance and everything, the sense was the sooner we get the lock off the gate, the better it will be because as long as there's a lock on a gate, it seems to be more tempting to the community mm -hmm. to try to find a way onto the field, whereas once you open the door, people mm -hmm. might go check it out and then they'll mm -hmm. forget about it. Like somehow so the when you lock said signage is being made, is, so someone's going to make signs? Yes, just but that's just concerning the animals cleaning okay, up after your no pets. Oh, I know okay. we talked earlier about a need for additional signs. Yeah. So that was Mike at the meeting. Mike Anderson, no, 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 probably not. But that's why I'm making a note here. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so getting that whole thing. And the people, guy says, they say, well, why, why can't we go on the field? And he's like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. Just was looking for information. Yeah. And then um, our plan for the February 12th meeting is to figure out the pick up and drop off procedure, what that new procedure will be, weather permitting, we will be yeah. working weather on that right. for the Pembroke. So um, our goal is to get something in place so that the committee can approve it and we can get it out mm -hmm. to the public. Yep. And that was our meeting. It was really. You seem to like being on that committee. It's such a nice group of people. I can't even tell you. Like, it is, it is it a is, really, it is, it is a, a nice really group. nice group of people. It always makes me feel like, wow, I got lucky when I landed in Georgetown. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice group. That's so good. really good. Okay. Um, school building. That was um, last week, right? Or when? Actually, Tuesday that night? was Tuesday night. Yes, we had a very short, brief meeting, um, only regarding the high school. Uh, the committee voted to approve a motion to direct Carl Franceschi, who is our architect of DRA, to ask Green Seal to modify their soil management plan report uh, to address our non-reportable levels of naturally occurring arsenic, thus indicating that our contractors should make their own safety plan based on normal precautions. Does that sound like mm -hmm. what you heard? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, coming up with the motion was a little tricky, yeah, but tricky. that's, yeah. It's a good one. A yeah, and our next meeting is on the 13th, so this coming Tuesday. Oh, you have another one? Yes. Right away? Yes. And that will be discussed so they both voted. And they those. voted not to have somebody monitoring it, you know, so there, there won't be, yeah. there won't be anything like what was going on in the turf field. It's a much smaller project. What was it, like 30, a 30 foot ditch, a basically? 30 foot ditch. Yes. yes. Um, so it's a, it's much smaller. Right. And the site and the soil. Remember the member of the state guy. This liability follows the soil. Right. right? They're not moving the no soil off site. Moving. Right. So there's not really any concern about that either. Right. Okay. Good. Um, and has there been a CPAC meeting? Um, there. There's one coming up. Has not been since the last school committee meeting, but okay. there is one um, it's coming up on the 21st of January. There's a transition boot camp. Um, it's hosted by the Georgetown CPAC, CPAC, and it's in collaboration with the ARC of Greater Haverhill and Newburyport. Um, but the meeting is going to be at the Georgetown High School. Um, doesn't say a 
from 7 to 9 p.m. And the snow date will be January 22nd. Uh, so what can families do to prepare their sons and daughters for the future? Uh, this small group discussion will provide a guide for the transition years, the process, checkpoints, and essential timelines. Uh, Carrie Mahoney will be speaking from the ARC of Massachusetts, and she's wonderful. She's a very dynamic speaker. I've, I've heard Carrie before. I've been to her pre presentations. Um, we'll lead the discussion, and participants will receive a copy of Transition Timelines. Okay. Thank you. Sure. There is the next PTA meeting. Yeah, I was just looking for that. So March 9th, I know we're going to go to that. Um, um, Jill had asked that we go to talk about um, the Transitions. transition. Mm -hmm. She had thought that the parents would be interested. In oh, I think March that'll 9th. be okay. Yeah, that'll be March a very busy. Yeah. Yeah, meeting. yeah, seven o'clock, and it's at the library at Pembroke. I believe so. That's where they normally have them. Yeah. Okay. So March 9th. Okay. If the location is different, we'll let you know. But okay. And then stack. We're in the process of setting up a meeting right. for um, our, our final get together to discuss some. Um, last minute things. Yep. So that'll be good. Yep. Um, okay, so old business. We can talk about the meeting with the Board of Selectmen on Monday mm -hmm. that we had um, regarding the Senior Center of Pearly. I thought the meeting went well. We didn't even have a joint meeting. We didn't even call it to order because it really wasn't. It was just yeah. them pretty much the um, um, the Board of Selectmen age. being notified for the first time just like we were at our last meeting. So. So it was informational. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I, th I think it went well, and um, a an additional room was was offered. Um, so at our meeting, we had four. We had talked about f the four rooms. Um, so Carol went back and discussed it with uh, the rest of the group to see if maybe that uh, an additional room could be offered, and you found that it could be, mm -hmm. which was great. Um, yeah. But I think, th I think it's going really well, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot has to be, you know, ironed out. Like we had talked about the but memorandum of intent, stuff. Yes. abuse, the MOU, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But I, but I definitely think it can be achieved mm -hmm. in oh, that yes. time frame. Absolutely, We're looking, you know, a year from now. So, I've, I've heard in two spots on the on the senior end. There's a lot of excitement in the senior community oh, about right. about the idea of it coming together. Details okay. not specific, but I know there's. There is excitement that something is happening. Yeah. Uh, We're excited well, too. to listen it's, to you know, Mr. Destraden, who I have never met before, mm -hmm. but to hear him say, like, for 55 years, mm -hmm. this has been a topic that they've wanted so badly to have, and to see that we can be a part of seeing that actually happen. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think of it, look what we've really seen happen. We've seen an override with the schools, mm -hmm. you know, new school being built, turf field. Um, the middle high school renovation. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing the possibility of a senior center. So I'm excited and that the, we be on part of it. The town, you know, really improved the infrastructure on the roofs at the public safety yeah. building and the and the, um, the highway garage. You have a beautiful new library. Yep. I mean, the there's, there's you got an ambulance service yeah, now, full time right. fire department. I mean, there mm -hmm. there's been a a lot of, and rail trails, you know, coming yep. through. Well, heart safe you know, I mean, there, there's there's a lot. Really you know, and I think Jim's been working on too. Jim Demento. Jim I Demento. give him a lot of credit. Yeah, he has not given up on that. We're going to help him in any way we can because he he's really stuck with us on the turf field. Yeah, yeah. but it's excitement, and I think the selectmen felt the same way. Uh, like yeah. Bill Trapani yeah. had said, you know, on his ticket, yeah. that's what he, yeah. you know, that he had wanted to see happen. I know um, Chairman Eggenberg said the same thing, and. And I know that um, Gary Fowler is mm -hmm. excited. It just, it, it's, it's. Well, I think what a, a way to do on. it. Ed that night talked about Newburyport spending six and a half million dollars to build a building and, and do it that way, and mm -hmm. to, to be able to put something together for less, a lot less than six and a half million dollars, I think is a pretty good. Right, mm -hmm. and to see what they are currently using. Yeah, I just think it, it, yeah. it can't be. Once we fix it all up the way they want, it's going to be a really lovely yeah. spot. Yeah, and they yeah. deserve it. They, they, they definitely they, deserve it. They definitely do. As so I've said before, I've heard that a lot of our seniors go down to North Andover, and yeah. they shouldn't have heard to. That That's too. a very long yeah. trek. I mean, they need to so North Andover have has a home program in their own community right here. Right. Yes, they do. And, you know, they have a, a large senior center and a lot going on in it. And, but well, that's we, the thing. We so we, have we that welcome here in other community community members to come Colleen, too. Yeah, I think Colleen probably does open it. You know, okay. to 
to other communities, but as she's pointed out, you know, she, like the birthday parties and those, those, she has entertainment. She, you know, she does a lot of those kind of things. I mean, I, maybe she does open it up, mm -hmm. but I do, I have heard what Pam said is true, that there are a number of seniors who do take advantage of uh, programs in other senior centers as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking they have some kind of network that they kind of work together on. Mm -hmm. They so, do, but they what? still shouldn't have to travel. You know, if oh, they want to travel, they, that's one thing, and that's wonderful that they have that yeah, chance. But right. if they don't, uh, you know, they yeah. need. They to should be have the right. opportunity to be here. Something right here in the middle of town. So, that's just um, the next step with that is, um, I'll set up a series of meetings with um, Mike and, um, well, probably Joan, Mike, uh, Mike, yeah. um, Colleen, and. You know, we're just kind of, iron out all the yeah. We just iron it up. Um, you know, we'll we'll iron it. Out. I, I I wanted to walk the space again so she can actually see like where would she want walls, you know, so we can take a look at that and um, yeah, we'll work out the MOI and then it would come back before you and before the board of selectmen and um, memo memo you I guess they call it. Yeah. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll move forward on that. But I just think the most important thing is just to keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, Question procedurally. I know with the Board of Selectmen we're talking about an MOU yeah. sort of coming from them, it sounded like. What I, I guess my question is what is the role what is the role of the school committee versus mm -hmm. the role of the, oh, see, the I selectmen? thought the MOU was coming from us. I know I, I think it I, how I interpret it is it's a joint discussion. That's like how I've worked with the GAA in the town on coming up with something. You know, anytime I've done a MO MOU it's always been you know who what are the interests of both groups and you know how are we putting it together and then my preference is that bo both groups sign. Uh, sign off on it because it is technically a school building so that it is our it is a property that we inhabit and mm -hmm. oversee mm -hmm. um, yet at the same time it is in the town of Georgetown and this senior center is going to be a town venture so I, I think that you know there's responsibility for everybody to to agree on the terms um, so that's how I would do it I would look at it as okay let's look at the kinds of things that will go into the memorandum of understanding just like with the GAA what are the things that people care about and then how do they how they get reflected in in a document that everybody signs and says yeah you know and then Colleen has her space and she does what she needs to do with it and we have our spaces and we do what we need to do with it and you know we live peacefully and harmoniously together <laughs> And sing Kumbaya. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. That can happen, right? It can, can happen. happen. It, it yes. can happen. We, we will have we no problem with that. We will have no problem with that. Here. I'm not the least bit worried about it. Well, that's good. Thank you for working so diligently yeah. with, with It's Colin. important. And, and I, I told you, when I had in my head, when I was thinking about moving the kindergarten, I said, this will serve more of the town's needs. And, you know, like I said, having gone to those sessions on those Saturdays and listened to people talk about how important it was to take care of the seniors, mm -hmm. you know, as well as taking care of the schools, as well as improving the infrastructure, as well as, you know, having recreation, as well as having um, a downtown center that was vibrant, you know, economic development. I mean, I heard all those things. And when I think about it, you can really look at each of those areas and really tick off a number of really important things that the town has done and I know it's been painful financially <coughs> but honestly when I think about what did Georgetown want to be and then I look at what the consensus of the group was and then what's been done the only thing really economic development still the the thing that's sort of still yeah. you know tough to get off the ground um, but you know but it looks better than it did oh my goodness you know, infrastructure wise it's better infrastructure wise I mean they gave us a 1.2 million dollar override to really save you know the school programs you know we haven't had to cut things for four years the town hasn't had to cut things for four years um, you know the you got the rail trail and the turf and now we can upgrade the fields you know if we can have a senior center that's a great you know asset to the seniors and to the whole town you know I, I don't know I just think I just think as painful as I know it has been for the taxpayers I, I, I really want to have people keep talking about what what is what has come as a result of it because there's an amazing amount of wonderful things that, you know, have happened not just for the schools and the school children, but for, you know, for the entire town. So, I think we're all excited about the senior center and how we can, you know, help make it happen and, you know, what we can do to um, support the the seniors in town because they have supported us. And they deserve it, as you said. Mm -hmm. Well said. So it's very exciting. 
Okay, I think we talked about the vandalism. We did. Yeah, I think we're good to go for that. Um, and then we just have um, the first reading of um, two policies, the EEAH, which is the anti-idling, uh, anti and the EFCA, which is the meal charging policy. So we will adopt those or approve at the next those meeting. at the next meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to no. add? I just want, I, Joan asked me if I would just see if we could have a very brief executive session. It would be negotiations with um, non-union employees. Okay. And it won't be long. Okay, so um, there is a uh, need for an executive session um, at 9.17 p.m. going into executive se session chapter 30. A section 21 for the purpose of um, non negotiation uh, with negotiation with non union employee employees mm -hmm. and it's a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. We will not be returning um, to TV. So have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>